everyone. Welcome to Secrets of Salt Marsh. This is our Ghost of Salt Marsh Patreon Greyhawk campaign. All the people that you see on the screen here are our Patreons. Thank you so much for all of your continued support. Uh, shout out to all of our Patreons. Without your support, the one shots, three shots, marathons that we run on this channel would not be possible. If you are interested in more information on what benefits you can get for being a Patreon, you can check out the link in chat. We also have a YouTube. You'll find all of our episodes for our campaigns, all of them on our YouTube. So you can head on over there if you like to catch up with any of that. If you would like to interact with this game, there are a couple of ways that you can do so. Just hanging out, chatting, following, all of that will give you points that you can use to grant a blessing, which is a reroll or advantage die to any player that you see here. Uh, or if you would like to add an element of fate to the narrative, every $10 guarantees a draw from the deck of many things to the player of your choice. And I want to say thank you so much, Godfather Wraith, for five draws, one for each person. And you know what? Let's start off. Let's start off with that. That way I can sow some chaos while while y'all do your intros. We'll start off with Emma. Hi. How are you? Oh, hi. I'm I'm good. How are How are you doing? I'm so good. I'm so ready. Uh, <laughs> this is a really easy game. All you gotta do is tell me when to stop. Um. Oh, hi, D'Angelo. It's so great to see you. Hi, Thanks so much for coming by. You know what's funny, though? I've actually gotten a lot better at shuffling because I've been playing a lot of Magic the Gathering. So <laughs> I know you were trying to delay there, but so I keep shuffling. Yeah. I know. I know. I, I saw you. Um, Stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Geek Dice. Stop. Godfather. Hey, so how are you doing, Stella? Hey, good, good. How are you? <laughs> good. All right. All right. I guess you can stop. <laughs> but I just suck at small talk, so I'm not even going to try You're to like... pretend. You're <laughs> like, that didn't last very long. Okay, no. uh, John. Stop, please. <laughs> yes, I will. Oh, that's a bad one. <laughs> Wait, don't stop. <laughs> Too late <now. laughs> And then zombie. All right, uh, so uh, to begin, we will reintroduce everyone that's at the table. Please tell me who you are, where we can find you, and remind us who you're playing. Maybe tell us a little fun fact about them, whatever you like. We'll start off with Emma. Hi, I'm Emma, also known as Emma Pernada. Um, you can find me on Twitch and Twitter at Emma Pernada. I'm also writing a TTRPG called All the Witches. It's on Kickstarter now. You should go check it out. It's pretty cool. Um, you can find it at all the witches underscore on Twitter or just search All the Witches on Kickstarter and you'll find it. Um, I play Arlen Ruvaloth. Um, she is a Triton cleric warlock um, who stole kind of the stories of adventure from her parents who were adventurers ran away from home and has now been kind of claiming their own successes as her own and pretending to be a much more um, experienced adventurer than she is. And no one questioned it. And so now she's like in charge of like this ship crew and adventuring party and is making all of these deals with like nobles and you know, she's just thriving and everything is totally fine and nothing bad is going to happen ever. Nope. A uh, fun fact about her is she doesn't eat red meat. Excellent. Thank you very much. We'll pop on over to Geek Dice. Hey, folks, I'm Geek Dice. You can find me here. I don't exist on socials anymore. Who knows? Maybe someday again. Um, I am playing Kissimmee Bright Bloom, also known as KB. He is an artificer bladesmith or excuse me, um, Battlesmith. He is a blade singer, and now he is a fighter. He is a brave knight warrior, defender of the sea lily. And a fun fact about KB is he is two foot nine, weighs 30 pounds, like a sack of potatoes, a small one, and he is 340 years old. Excellent, thank you. Does a sack of potatoes really weigh 30 pounds? It could be, it could be. Maybe it's bag of rice, I don't know. 
Mm. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Godfather! Hi, I'm uh, Godfather Wraith V underscore ESP, but you can call me Wraith, you can call me Godfather, you can call me Tim, or you can call me anything you want except late for dinner. Um, so I play Garen. He's the average nondescript rogue who's really good at making things dead. He used to be the uh, or a scout for the Catechon Royal Army before he retired and became an adventurer and just never stopped being stealthy and perceptive. Excellent. So. Thank you very much. And you've got a companion. Tell me about your little... Oh, oh yes. Barnicus Grizz. Little uh, owlbear cub full of energy and Garen, for some reason, thinks it's okay to bring him on a boat. <laughs> yep. Well, at least you have, like, uh, the equivalent of, like, a baby harness. Yeah. Wait, no. Yeah. No, it's being made. Oh, it's oh, being made. That's right. We didn't get it before we left. That's true. Oh, yep. You God. don't have a harness. <laughs> oh, <laughs> You have boy. a baby owlbear on a boat. Uh, yeah, it's going to be fine. It'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Everything will be fine. Yeah. Barnacus has flat armor. We know about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you so much. We'll pop on over to John. Hi there, I'm John. I go by Indicorous on all the social media, and you'll probably find me on most of them, unless they're super obscure. <laughs> um, I am playing Paul of Amenfurt, who is a street waif from the city of Amenfurt, who has made his way to Saltmarsh to find adventure, and he's got on board a ship, which he's really excited about. He's made some friends on the way, all these lovely people who are playing the PCs here. And uh, he has a special best friend who's his roommate, Tully, played amazingly by Stella. I hope we get to hear from Tully today. Uh, he also is uh, is a person for pets um, and, uh, and other small friends. So I wouldn't call Penny Sprinkle a pet. She's technically his familiar, but she is almost in some ways a, a protector figure for him and she's a pixie he also has a little mouse named buttons who mostly hangs out in his hat um his uh for for D, &D stuff he's actually a warlock um but he is a pacifist warlock and he doesn't generally hit anything maybe sometimes an undead thing or something like that but he doesn't take any of those offensive spells. And he is a devotee of his warlock patron, who is not a crazy demon or anything like that. It's the, the hero deity, Heward. And thus he has a handy haversack. Um, a, a fun fact about Paul is that he is asexual. Awesome. Nobody knew that until today. Uh, yes, that is so cool. Oh. oh, that makes me so happy. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll pop on over to Zombie Final 89. Hello. Before we get into my introductions, because I got to be a little extra, um, a bag of rice weighs about 67.5 pounds, and a sack of potatoes weighs about 110 pounds. Okay, small sack. <laughs> oh, I should you. say I recently bought by accident actually I I bought a bag of oats and it was 25 pounds so this is in real life though I don't know what it'd be in D &D. <laughs> but I meant to buy a five pound one I ordered it online from from this local organic um, uh, produce company and then mm -hmm. I get this humongous bag that's as big <laughs> as my desk and now I'm making oatmeal cookies for everyone for the rest of the year Yay! Sweet. I love that for you. That's amazing. It was it was the size of your desk, and it's only twenty five pounds. My desk is not very big. Gotcha. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's still pretty. It's pretty massive. Like so, KB is closer to a, a sack of oats or a bag of rice. Okay, mm -hmm. gotcha, gotcha. Cool. Uh, zombie. Hello, I'm Jacob. I'm Zombie. I'm Z. I'm one of those three names you have to call me. I'm the Lore Keeper and Captain Z of the Good Ship Clip. I probably teach you many clips, but that's up to your own discretion. Um, today I'm playing Finn Carson, who is a ranger researcher who has his little booty bims right here. Has his little pet, because everyone here has got a pet, apparently. Uh, he's my favorite little botty, and I'm very happy that I can use props, because I like using props. Props are fun. Props are fun. Um, 
You can find me on Twitter at Zombie Fighter Unite. If you go there, you will see a little pinned tweet there by by the lovely Lady May. Go support Lady May. Lady May is awesome. Um, in that tweet, you will see that there's a business card. I do Twitch clips. I do audio editing. I do video editing. If you know or you yourself are interested in any of those services, please get a hold of me. I'd love to do some edits for you because I love the editing. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Fun fact about Finn. Uh, uh, he... Um, hmm. I don't know. I'm trying to think of a fun little fact about Finn. Uh, he's he very kind of like I guess me, very loyal to a fault. Uh, he'll he'll fight for, which is part of the reason he's doing what he's doing is fighting to avenge those who he's either lost or have been hurt by any great source of evil. So when it comes to things like him going down in a battle. He gets really tore up about it because he feels like he failed in a way. He wants to be there to protect and help and not feel like we got to carry him off the field. He's down like that kind of thing. Thank you very much. Uh, just as a quick recap of what happened last time. Uh, essentially, we threw a party on our boat while we were docked in Salt Marsh. We had a naked day because the captain, Ar Arlen, uh, was pulled away for business and... Cole reminded Tully that when the captain's away, it's naked day. Uh, so essentially, we had a very massive party. The important thing to note out of what came out of that was that Gellin Primewater had come to the Sea Lily to drop off the missive that was from the Salt Marsh Council, essentially giving y'all the go-ahead to go about your mission um, to come collect the final details and uh, just do your thing. And... While Gallen was doing that, approaching the Sea Lily to give this note, y'all invited Gallen, and Gallen's a party monster, and you bonded, I guess, in a way. Uh, he tore it up, y'all had a great time, and uh, the next day we set off. Um, we will open up not on the Sea Lily, but a few hours back and I have to use the right monitor for this hold on Arlen you have been approached by Imloth she has come into your quarters knocking of course politely and at the door she says captain I have gone ahead and spoken to Master KB and let him know that he will be in charge while we go about our day. I am sorry to have taken the initiative without speaking to you first, but we have time, and I think this is very important for us to go over before we set sail on this mission. There's something that... I feel must be addressed. All right. Um, well, come on in. Actually, and she turns, taking a step out of the doorway. And as she does, you can see that she's holding a sword that's sheathed in a scabbard in her hand. She gestures outside. Actually... I was thinking perhaps you would join me instead. All right. Um, of course. Um, eyeing the sword, is this like a threatening thing? No, 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 no. Okay. It's a, this is definitely going to be some kind of business or like something that's not like, Ooh, we're going to go out on town and have a good time. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. No, not a threat. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll head out. Okay. As she guides you off of the sea lily. You can smell bacon coming from the mess hall underneath. Uh, you would know that generally we don't cook bacon on the ship, especially when we're out, because we want to make sure that the meals are. In some stock that can be available for everybody to enjoy. 
Uh, and she leads you off of the ship and begins to walk you through the dark district of Salt Marsh. And you begin to move further into the town. She's moving between different carts and wagons that are being pulled, maneuvering through the waves of people as they're going about their day. She seems to be taking you northeast. Is this actual north northeast or yeah? Because um, like up is upright. <laughs> uh, no, uh, up is east on this map. Hold on, I'll show everybody the map. <laughs> Why would they make this map where east is up? Um, but essentially, you're starting here uh, at 16, uh, no, like 15, and you're beginning to make your way through the city, essentially, and going this way. Got it. So where exactly are we heading? So... As you may recall, because you were the one who hired me to begin with, I haven't always been sailing folk. And I had a life before my time serving the city watch. Like you, I was an adventurer. And like you, I led a party of very eager friends. And what happened? They all died. And she dodges a piece of lumber that swings by. She's making her way out of the downtown industry area and beginning to head north there towards the fields. I believe that, in a way, it was my responsibility and my burden, but I think there are lessons to learn. Something perhaps that I can teach you before we leave Salt Marsh, especially since there may be some difficult decisions you might have to make at some point in your career. Very well, I'm eager to learn. Eventually, you are brought to the edge of what looks like a field. It's great, open, wide area, and she motions you to stop. She takes a few paces ahead of you and turns to face you, and she's holding her scabbard in her hand again. She says, Captain, what will you do? If you are required to make a difficult choice between your friends, between the people that you would call allies, what if you had to take one of them down? Could you do it? Of course. She draws her um, sword. Are you sure that's a smart decision? It's important to be more than just talk, Captain. You've seen me do much more than talk, Imloth. Yes, but... You've spent a lot of time with these people. And you've spent a lot of time with me. And you worry that my edge has dulled? Perhaps. We have gotten to know each other quite a bit recently. And so what... And she kind of nods towards the sword. Are you wanting to do here? A duel, if you're all right with it. And what limitations would you like? 
first to draw blood. Does that sound reasonable? How about the first to wind the other? To wind. Very good. Half health. Okay. <laughs> she takes on a stance. You haven't seen her move with this sort of grace before. When she was working for the city guard, she was wearing this clunky armor and she had a spear. She had an oar, I think. She, I think she was the, the boat driver or something. Um, and then on the ship, she hasn't really been pulling on anything other than ropes and fixing barrels into place and you haven't really seen her in her element before and here standing opposite of you is someone who seems confident someone who seems experienced she has her sword pointed at the ground all right and Arlen kind of steps forward um, and does not draw any weapon, but just kind of like pulls her sleeves up a little bit. Okay. Uh, so we're going to montage this a little bit. I'm going to give you complete agency over this scene to tell me what this looks like. Imloth will try not to hold back. She seems to be very serious about this. And she will try to bring you down to half health. What happens? What does this look like? What does Arlen do? I think... Imloth rushes forward um, as Arlen is just kind of standing there waiting. And Imloth swings wide, and Arlen catches the blade with one hand, and it kind of like cuts into her arm. And then she reaches and grabs Imloth's hands and casts Inflict Wounds at, what's my highest level? At a third level. Okay. And just causes this kind of like withering and pain to go through her hands until she drops her sword um, and backs up. And Arlen, like, wincing a bit, takes the blade out of her arm and then heals herself. So what now? Would you say that this exchange is really short-lived? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, she staggers back and... Almost as quickly as it has initiated, it's over. And she looks down at where this spell has afflicted her. She looks down at her quivering hand, at the blade on the ground. She looks up at you. She tries to straighten, and you can see that she is struggling a bit, breathing heavily. But she looks proud. I'm glad... You were able to do this. There's no telling on what we might find at the Sahagan Fortress, but whatever it is, I think... I think you just need to be prepared for anything. It will be. As for what now, she curls her hand into a fist she grunts a bit as she reaches down and picks up her sword and slides it away. How about a let lunch? Sounds wonderful. In fact, I think we could head over to the Sea Grove of Obad High. What's that again? It's the druid place where the the giant frog lives with uh, oh. Farron, the, the, the short king. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Sure. I didn't realize they cooked food there. 
for others to eat. Oh, well, I'm sure we'll find something. And the two of you begin to walk and eventually you reach the sea grove and you can see that Farron is peeking over his shoulder, seems to be working on something. He swivels his head. He says, oh, hello there. Welcome. Hmm? Hello. Do you have any food? Oh, um, he, he turns away. He's like, uh, not really, and continues working. And he does this thing where he keeps looking over his shoulder at you as Imloth says, follow me. Right? And I will follow Imloth. And essentially, she takes you to this patch where it's very clearly there's a little picnic area that's been set up. Oh. What exactly is happening here? I just wanted to make sure that, you know, everything would be all right and just make sure to, you know, just spend some time together before we head off. That is very kind of you. And Arlen will sit. So what did you make? She pulls out a sandwich with bread. She pulls the top off and there's just like a fish between the bread. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might like this. Arlen will kind of like go like she's going to grab the sandwich, but then she'll put her hands on top of Imloth's hands that are really injured yeah. and she'll she'll cure her okay uh what does the spell look like and what does it smell like um <laughs> so i think um arlen places her hands on top of emmaloth's and the sandwich um the fish sandwich and will cast Cure Wounds at a second level. Um, and as she does, just this kind of warm light radiates from her hands um, as, like, color and blood starts rushing into Emla's hands again. Um, I'd also like to note, Arlen doesn't heal people, like, ever. So this is oh, notable. Oh, okay, okay. But, um... In this kind of tender moment between the two of them, um, the fish starts moving as it's come back to life because I healed it. Okay, I love it. Oh, God! <laughs> oh, it's uh, it's moving! She drops the sandwich. The fish is flopping on the grass. Um... I'll grab a knife and stab the fish really quick. <laughs> it flails around on the knife. Oh... Hmm. Sorry, sorry, I'm not very good at that. <laughs> it's alright, um, enjoy. And she pulls out like a small thing of strawberries and begins to eat the strawberries. Yeah, I'll just wait for the fish to stop wiggling and then I'll go to town. Alright, uh, and then we will fade to black on that scene. We open back up on the water. The group of you have departed Salt Marsh, and you are now setting sail, or you have set sail, essentially. Uh. The group of you are gathered around a map, and you now must decide what path you want to take here with your journey. You know that along the way, leaving Salt Marsh, you could stop by the lighthouse where you met Ursa Major. You could stop by Abbey Island where you encountered very many undead things. And also along the way is the Blue Spot and the Lizard Folk Lair. 
Blue hole. Blue hole. Oh yeah, blue hole. <laughs> That's what it's called. That's right. So you're all gathered together here. Imloth says, well, we've got no real timeline. So I suppose it's all up to you. Did we have any reason to stop by the lighthouse or the Abbey Island? Not really, unless you want to check in. You have no obligation to. Yeah. Um, I think Arlen has said that she wanted to go to this blue hole for a long time. She now has the little kelp that will help people breathe underwater. Oh, yeah. And they have the time to go and see what's in this blue hole in the water. <laughs> and Arlen will dramatically draw her club and point it forward to the blue hole. All right. You see Imloth open the door and say, set sails for the blue hole. You hear the ding ding and the pulling of rope and other boat sounds. I don't really know how boats work, but Sails unfurl and boat moves over water. Sounds about right. All right. Um, I'm going to need someone to roll me a d20. Okay. Just a d20? Yeah. I need one person to do it. Who wants to volunteer? I'll do it. Okay. okay. Roll me one d20 here. Eight. There you go. They rolled an eight. Very cool. Red dragon shows up. Good luck. <laughs> Yay. We're going to China. Okay. Um, the ship begins to move west. And uh, as you do, is there anything that anybody wants to do? While wow, your crew's doing boat stuff. Well, I like climbing up to the climbing up in the rigging or even to the crow's nest and and look taking a look out at everything okay i love that so that's what i'll do very cool ab's gonna spend time <clears throat> running through drills with our our various armed companions uh, there's a few knights and i think there may be some crew although they're not officially soldier sailors i think some of them you know, may want to get some training for self-defense, et cetera. So anybody, everybody, and even our experienced, you know, combatants can participate as well. Okay. I think mm -hmm. that uh, immediately who will join you will be Book, the uh, very intense looking individual with their hair wrapped on one side and shorn on the other. Uh, and also quick. Excellent. <clears throat> Anything else with anybody? What's Garen doing? Oh, where have you put Barnicus? <laughs> oh, God. Yes. Uh, we never did find a consistent place for Barnicus. So, <laughs> um, I'd, link, I, I'd like to say Garen found a length of rope and has kind of lashed a harness mm -hmm. onto Barnicus. Okay. To try to keep some semblance of control of him. Okay, I think um did did you want to keep Barnicus on the top deck or perhaps below deck in a room or something? Uh, I think Garen I can never remember her name. Uh, I think Garen would check with Simone on what she thinks is best. Okay. Well, um... I would say that it would probably make sense to... give Barnicus room in the hold below. Sometimes there might be an errant okay. wave or that we crash on, and last thing you want is your owlbearer cub to go flying off of the ship. I agree. All right. Um, do we have a place that's not 
going to cause too much problems for the crew. I'm sure we can figure it out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you. Of course. Thank you. And uh, she will essentially set up a space below uh, the main deck. And make sure that Barnicus will be very comfortable. <laughs> Good. And Garen's just being a little clingy because he's he's lost Barnicus once. He's not losing him again. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think he'd probably stop by Ello's quarters and see what she's doing. You see her buried with her nose in a book and she's literally buried her nose in the book and she's sleeping face down <laughs> in a book. You get the sense that she's been up all night. The candles yeah. that she has in the little lanterns have burned all the way down. Darren would grab a blanket, put it over her shoulders, and let her sleep. Oh. Ooh, uh, roll me a perception check. I know you have 20 perception, but <laughs> listen, just, just roll me something real quick. All right. I might get a nat one in that. <laughs> you got a nat hey. one. That's so funny. Um, oh, I, I do want to let you know that uh, I believe Emma got you a blessing at the beginning of the stream. Mm. You know what? I'll use it here, because why not? Okay, go ahead and roll again. Even with a nat one, it was an 11. Okay, a 28. Yeah. Um, okay. You hear her mumble in her sleep underneath her breath. It is so quiet, and the ship is so loud. Anybody else would not have heard it. But you hear the name... Mumril. You don't know what it is. You've never heard it before. Hmm. All right. Darren takes note. And heads back out. In. Hmm. What would you like um, to do? Well, um, let's see. Um, how far are we just, are we just loading? Like, where are we at on this? Are we already in, out in the sea or are we? Yeah, we're going to say that we're about three hours in at this point and we're, it wouldn't make sense to go all the way around. Uh, we're essentially heading north. Sorry, west. West, yes. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, I think he will just be for the most part, kind of just looking out in the ocean, kind of looking past the lighthouse as, as we're as we're passing by it, and um, just kind of like thinking, um, um, if anyone's around, I guess he'd interact with them. But for the most part, he's probably just gonna be looking at the ocean, maybe grabbing some food. Um, go back to his room at some point, but... Okay. Uh, you will find that Malaya has made the beginnings of a wonderful potato soup that will serve as a base for a transformative soup that will continue to sustain your crew for many days, and it will change as she adds more shit to it. Uh, there's always soup. Uh, essentially, mm -hmm. a few hours will pass now. And as we begin to move further out into the ocean, breaking away from the shoreline, mm -hmm. there's a shift in the air. Paul, you're the first to see it up in the crow's nest. You can see that there's a storm in the distance and it's quickly approaching you. It seems you're heading straight for it. And you notice, actually go ahead and roll me a perception check. Right, perception. 13. You notice that there's something unusual about this storm. Paul has been on boats before, correct? Just this one. Just this one, okay. In that case, you know what storms are like. Maybe they're a little different out on the ocean, but there's definitely something unusual about this one. There is something electric in the air. As you see a whip of lightning crack against the sky, there's this brilliant purple hue that echoes out amongst these 
thick, heavy, dark clouds for but a moment. And then there's another crack of lightning over here, and it's red. Another, and it's orange. This seems weird. I'll call out to the captain and crew. Strange weather ahead! Look out! Orange and purple colors in the sky! And, as Pole and lightning! Out, Don't forget lightning! And as Paul points this out, you all notice, huh, yeah, weird weather. You... Can we get the sense of why, what's up with this weird weather at all? Yes, KB? Yeah, KB has seen a lot of a lot of seasons in his many years. <clears throat> and he's a, a little bit of a, an expert in all things nature. Is this something that KB has seen before? Okay. Um, Arlen, because you are a triton and you know all kinds of ocean things, I like a history check from Arlen and KB at advantage. Nice. Thank you. 22 from Arlen. Very good. That is a nat 20, which is a 30. You think you're better than me, Geek Time? <laughs> <laughs> I had to. At least once. Okay. A, a, a nat 30. <laughs> a nat 30, just casually. Um, Arlen, you would know that sometimes there are magical storms. And you would know that they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. There are magical storms for each school of magic essentially and sometimes more um but you're not quite sure which one this is kb you know exactly what kind of storm this is this is a transmutation magical storm yeah this is not good uh, turn the boat around <laughs> what's going on what it i know it's a magical storm but what do you um, know that i don't know yeah I it, it can be really bad. It's like the transformation school of magic, you know, that, that changes creatures and changes things and other things. Um, I think KB says, look, and points down at the water. And you can see the water around the ship. The ship is moving through it. So uh, the water crashes against the bow and it ripples out. And you see that the water is changing into ice and rock and is kind of bouncing off of the ship. You hear this weird grinding noise. All right, yeah. Um, turn around if we can. Uh, I don't know if we can, but uh, you see that the storm is moving extremely quickly, and it seems to be washing over you. And Simona calls from the helm and says, "Captain, at this point." We would just be following the storm in the direction it's going. Are you sure you want us to turn around? Can we turn, like, right or left? <laughs> Starboard or, I don't know, the po boat turns. Yeah, no, right or left we'll try to get out. cannon. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, all right, Captain. We'll make bearing for... Uh, southeast. <laughs> can I, can I like go to the edge of the boat as I'm seeing like the water turn into ground and everything, and cast wall of water to try to push us, um, to get away? Yes, you can. Um, tell me what this looks like. Um, yeah, so Arlen rushes to the edge of the boat as kind of the ground is turning to stone and like all these other things just changing wildly. The storm is kind of starting to move above us. Um, and Arlen just kind of like lifts her arms up and suddenly this burst of water kind of erupts from the ground, um, hitting the edge of the ship, pushing us back um, a little bit. And then as we're like pointing away from the direction we were going now, um, Arlen cancels that spell and then uses gust of wind 
to push into the sails to get us moving. I love that so much. That is so cool. Um, as you're performing all these spells, what kind of demeanor do you have on? What kind of expressions are you making? Urgency. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Urgency. Arlen's very focused, trying to move quick. Okay. Um, you see that the crew all around you are running around and they're trying to batten down the hatches and tie up rope and do things that are appropriate. And they are all really experienced boat people. Um, as the ship begins to turn, you hear it groaning, almost in pain, as it's being twisted and turned around with all of these spells and the storm. And you almost hear what sounds like a deep, painful moan coming from just the, the depths of the boat. It may be it's a trick of the wind. It's really hard to tell. There's a lot of stuff going on. You see that... A mile out that way, there's a patch of molten lava roiling in the water in the midst of this storm. You see that there's ice beginning to come down in shards and um, three miles that way. And essentially, this is just n not good news. But you do manage to successfully maneuver the boat out of the thick of the storm. And as you cast that gush of water... That's not the name of the spell. Wall of Water. I think I think that is the name of the spell, actually. <laughs> As mm -hmm. you cast Wall of Water, I think the initial surge has launched something up onto the boat. And you're in a state of urgency, so you don't pay too much attention to it. But once the storm begins to subside, and you're leaving it, we'll say that you're about, like, here now. Oh, here now. Uh, you have definitely made some distance between you and the blue hole, but the storm is raging elsewhere. Garen is in the hold checking for damages to the boat. Okay. Hole, what are you doing? You are up in the crow's nest throughout all of this. I think oh, if you stayed up there, it would have been like whiplash. Yeah, I think he did stay up there um, because he's excited about this. He, It's scary, but it's also really beautiful. He's never seen anything like this before. He just grew up in a dirty alley of a city, and this is just amazing. So he's just checking it out, and he might try and write a song about it later. I think especially being so high up there and in the heart, the eye of the storm, you would have seen just brilliant flashes of color, especially as they explode behind the clouds, all of this texture, all of this depth. And I think it's very humbling to see this explosive heaven of power above you, all around you. And it makes you realize how small and how fragile this boat is in comparison to everything around you. Mm -hmm. And eventually, the ship begins to pull out of the storm and calm. The waves are definitely thrashing a bit, but and calm is relative, but calmer than it was now. That was something. That was really something. I think Penny is like just has like tucked herself into your shirt and just clinging to the edge of it. Is it over? She was probably yelling at me. Get down. Go down. <laughs> yeah. It's not safe here. No, but look. Uh, as you kind of begin to stand up, you see that there's a dark shape on the main deck and you see that some of the crewmates are beginning to gather around it they're not quite sure what's going on well now i want to go down and check it out but i'm gonna dive off into the water <laughs> into the water okay yeah. you do it climb. yeah all of you see <laughs> Paul just jump down and just I'm man, man overboard And then he'll just grab onto some of the netting on the side of the ship and climb back up. Yep. 
Way faster than walking, climbing down. What's that? You see Tolly say, Pull! Quickly, quickly, come! Look! All right, I'll head over. And as the group of you, whoever wants to approach, uh, as you make your way forward, you see a very interesting looking creature. Arlen, you know exactly what this is. Any of you who've spent some time at sea would know what it is, but you see what is essentially a very chonky, very furry creature. It's kind of tubular in shape, and it has these very large whiskers growing out of the sides of its face, and it has these flippers for hands, and it has a long tail. And it has these extremely large bulbous eyes. It seems to have retracted its head into its body. And it has no neck right now. And it looks scared. Seems like the ocean spat out a seal onto your ship. Oh, why did I miss the seal? I'll I'll start talking in my gibberish. Oh. <laughs> that's that's actually animal talk. Um, with I don't think I've ever seen animals. a seal jump on board before like this. How you doing there, Bella? Arf, arf. He's 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 scared. Take it easy. We'll help you. It's a bit of bad weather. We'll take you wherever you want to go. Where do you live? I'll I'll help him kind of look over the side of the the ship. As you try to approach him, he backs up into a corner. Uh, I want to try and approach as well and use animal handling. Okay. To try go and ahead. calm it down. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll me animal handling. Uh, 15. Uh, even with a 15, uh, you get the sense that this creature is very shy. And with the circle of people around him, essentially, mm -hmm. he is very uncomfortable. And even if you're very gentle and you're careful with your approach, he doesn't seem to want to come forward. Maybe Everyone he's back hungry. away from the seal. Maybe he's hungry. And I, and I hold up a fish. Pull back away. Come on, Tully. We're scaring uh, I'll, it. Oh, back away. Too. Oh, okay. Well, it looks friendly. I think. It looks so soft. I want to touch it. Don't touch it. Okay, I won't. Weird question. Do seals... Seals don't breathe underwater, right? Uh, correct. They're mammals. Okay. Can hold their I have emissary of the sea, but it says... Creatures that breathe water. <laughs> so I don't think that applies here. Uh, well, salt Martian seals can breathe underwater. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, that's so cool. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Arlen will go up and just try to let it know that it's okay. Okay. Roll me persuasion at advantage. Nineteen. Okay. As everyone begins to back up and you approach, it looks up at you and... It ha has these large puppy dog eyes. Just watches you. Arf. <laughs> yes, safe. <laughs> Arf. I'm gonna like reach over to KB for the fish. Uh, and I'm gonna offer it to the seal. You see the seal roll over and expose its belly to you and it just holds its mouth open. Lazily laying there. All right. And I'll kind of drop the fish in its mouth. It eats the fish and it seems very happy. Its tail begins wagging like a dog. And you see it slowly beginning to fall asleep. All right, everyone. Be nice to the seal. Leave it alone. <laughs> I'm just kind of walks away to go 
we did just go through a major storm, so Arlen's <laughs> got to check and make sure everything's okay. Okay. Uh, as you make your way down, Garen's already talking with Simona below deck, and uh, you come up on them. And Simona says, Captain, just as I was telling Garen here, it's wild. I don't have an explanation for it. The ship is repairing itself. Yes, I I see it too. There was a plank split right up there near the uh, heel, and it's fixed. Nothing wrong with it. Right, right before our eyes. This is a weird above the table question. Yeah. Didn't Geek Dice wish for mm -hmm. the ship to be able to repair itself? And yep. was that wish vocalized at any point? Yes. Well, not to the party, only to players, I think. Okay, so the party doesn't know about that. Okay. Correct. That's all I needed to know. Well, that is a handy thing for a ship to be able to do. I won't look a gift ship below decks. <laughs> yes, quite. Uh... You don't have to be so serious. That was a funny joke. You could have laughed a little. Thank you. Thank you. Ha. Agnes, the ha. quartermaster, goes, ha. Continues writing in his little book. Almost seems Garen, like it's destiny, Captain. Yeah, Garen just kind of quirks a smile and then walks off. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, Aaron's like acne. <laughs> yeah. Uh, eventually, as uh, y'all come back up to the main deck, um, Imloth will say, Captain, we've ventured further south than we would have wanted. According to the maps, we need to continue northeastward if we want to seek out the blue hole. Mm. Did All we right. see the well, storm pass? Did the they like pass. Mm -hmm. You see, the storm is essentially continuing uh, further north, so it's passing okay. over Abbey Island now. <laughs> Ooh, okay. dear! So that's All good. Those... It, it, it didn't go like over Salt Marsh, as far as we know, right? Maybe it might swing. Who knows? Oh my gosh, Stella! Can all of the zombies and undead from the island be turned into like creepers and things from the stat <laughs> blocks that were just released by D and D? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Writes down furiously. <laughs> Giving the uh, DM ideas. Why? Because <laughs> <laughs> it'd be funny. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, funny. All right. Well, now that we're out of the danger of the storm, we can correct the course and head that way. Aye, aye, Captain. What should we do about our friend here? It's been an hour since you've calmed it down now, and it's continuing to sleep can you lift the seal how much do you seals weigh a lot yeah how much does a chonky seal weigh chonky yeah. boy. captain i i suppose since this is a much larger seal than usual it is around a thousand pounds i don't think it's going anywhere <laughs> exactly <laughs> it, it will leave when it wants to leave <laughs> Until then, we will continue on as we do. All right. You're the captain. Uh, make sail for Blue Hole! And ship things continue. As the group of you are making your way towards the Blue Hole, you see that you're passing over uh, various interesting qualities and uh, terrain below you see that the storm seems to have unearthed quite a bit of things and there's some debris floating up and the water has become quite clear in certain places and you see perhaps a hundred meters to the left there are bits of color that are shimmering below the surface it seems that something has broken off and it's gathered in these bulbous clumps and it's kind of floating as a giant mass 
of m very many tiny pieces. And then you see to the right, the other direction, that there are these long strands of kelp that go from deep, deep below that seem to have grown so long that they reach near the surface. What essentially is a kelp forest. Do you check them out or keep driving? What's that oh. over there? In the, what's the blobby thing? I'll go and take a look. Okay. Take a look by your eyes or jumping in the water? I'll jump in the water. Okay. I have a swim speed and can breathe underwater. It's yeah. fine. Garen's going to take a look by his eyes. Okay, uh, that's a 13 from Garen, and uh, Arlen, you jump in the water. Uh, as you jump in the water, you realize pretty quickly that they are bits of broken coral reef. And they almost look like jewels here. These fist-sized clumps of coral that have broken off, and they're a rainbow of colors. Garen, as you watch Arlen swimming out, you can see that on the other side of this mass is a shark. Arlen doesn't oh. seem to see the shark quite yet. Garen calls out, Shark! Don't know That's if Arlen can hear him. <laughs> sharks, are, sharks are nice. <laughs> you wouldn't... You wouldn't villainize sharks in your campaign, would you, Stella? <laughs> Listen, you can adopt anything in this game. <laughs> um, do I hear Garen shout about the shark? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, I will see the shark and wave to it that I'm friendly. Okay, roll me persuasion check. Sixteen. I rolled it at twenty. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, it begins swimming towards you, very fast. Let's How see. far away? <laughs> Say that it's a uh, hundred feet from you. You can reach, but. Roll me an insight check at um, advantage. You would okay. know. You would be very familiar with these sort of animals. Okay, with a 19, it seems very curious about you. It doesn't seem like gonna eat you mm -hmm. aggressive, but you know, sharks are pretty just aggressive creatures in the sense of like, you know, you had to like, and throw them. They're like very passionate. They really <laughs> passionate throw themselves eating. into everything they do. Yeah. Okay. Passionate about eating. Yeah, um, that too. Arlen's just gonna stare it down. Okay. Uh, it essentially swims up towards you. It swims past you. It doesn't slow down at all. And then it swims in a in an arc. And it comes around you. It seems to be circling you, but it doesn't bump you. It doesn't bite you. It's very curious. Okay. I'm just going to start collecting these, like, cool pieces of coral. Okay. Very nice. You have drawn the gem card. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, you can add 500 gold worth of coral to your inventory. Awesome. Okay. Uh, by the then time I'm gonna swim back up to the ship. <laughs> yeah. By the time you fill up whatever bag you have full of coral, uh, the shark seems to have lost interest in you and has left. 
and you clamber onto the ship. All right, I found some cool coral, and the shark was friendly, and we can keep moving. That coral looks really nice. That could make a good, a good handle for a weapon. Mm -hmm. You want some? Good, yeah. Oh yeah, that that'd be nice. Maybe I can make uh, something. I'll subtract like fifty gold worth of coral and give it to KB. Sweet. Okay, very cool. Uh, as the group continues forward, you begin to approach the blue. Hole. Blue hole. The blue what hole. What was in the blue hole again that we wanted? We don't know. We don't it's know. just cool and mysterious. <laughs> oh, that's good. I like the that. The idea was to discover the mystery. Mm -hmm. You know, there there had been a moment, I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, where there had been a vision. I think KB had a vision of something down in the hole. And there oh. was large moving forms. Oh, yeah. I believe. Yep. Uh, just as a reminder, I'm, this has been talked about amongst the group, so you would all know this, but uh, a blue hole is a circular sinkhole that forms on the bed of the sea in shallow water. Uh, this particular one, we'll say that it's about a thousand feet wide and a thousand feet deep, and uh, you know that they are filled with secrets. Sometimes they hide monsters, sometimes they hide treasure. There's only one way to find out. The ship groans as it begins to come to a stop, slowly skidding across the water here as you approach the edge of the blue hole. And there's a sort of hush, this sort of anticipation with the crew as everyone's gathered on the main deck. And they're all looking at you, the group of you, it's probably pretty assumed that you will be the ones to check it out, and they'll keep the ship sh safe. Yeah. What is everyone I'm gonna... wearing? I'm wearing yeah. my normal stuff. Yeah, same. Okay. Heavy armor? Uh-huh. We've always said that I can swim in it before. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah. yeah. Tight pants and a blouse. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is leather. Okay. Leather armor. Okay. Uh, my name says scale meal. Okay, so Finn, the water is deep. Mm -hmm. You're going to be swimming for some time here. Your scale meal is it is scale meal medium or heavy? I think it's medium. Why did I type medium? That's mm -hmm. not going to help me. Scale. <laughs> Find a medium near you. Medium. Uh, okay, it's medium. You're fine. Uh, it will be heavy. It will be exhausting if y'all have to swim for a long time. So uh, just keep that in mind. But you'll be fine. Yay. Okay. Uh, Simona says, we do have a rowboat if you want to take it. Do you just want to swim over there? What is the plan? Hmm. I mean, we will eventually need to swim, but it might be best to uh, take the rowboat in a bit farther. I think that's a good idea for you all. Um, I don't here, mind I got, rowing. I got this for each of you, and I hand each of you a piece of like magical kelp. Mm -hmm. It'll let you breathe underwater. Oh, nice. That'll be helpful. Nice. How long does it last? I don't remember. 30 minutes? <laughs> mm. So I'm also trying to remember, did we say bows do work underwater or no? I believe it's considered at disadvantage. Hold on. There's mm. actually a handout literally for this. Oh. Yeah, I think weapons that uh, don't have disadvantage are, are is a short list. Spear. Trident, short sword, and um, dagger. In essence, those things that can cut through water. All right. There's a list. Rogarin's leaving his bow on the uh, boat then. Underwater combat. Yay. 
Yeah. Here we go. Oh. That's melee. This is range. Making a melee weapon attack. Creature that doesn't have a swimming speed has disadvantage on the attack roll unless it's a dagger, a javelin, short spear, spe a short sword, spear, or trident. A ranged weapon attack automatically misses a target beyond the normal range. Even if the target is within normal range, it has a disadvantage unless it's a crossbow, a net, or a weapon that's thrown like a javelin. Okay, so like with a bow, you'll treat a normal attack in normal range with disadvantage. Yeah. It's yeah. not impossible, but definitely a lot harder. Yeah, that that's not wise for Garen, because even if he hits, he's going to hit for garbage. <laughs> for him, at least. Mm -hmm. So, yep, you he's can... going to go with a short bow. Or short sword, I mean. Okay. I was going to say you could take aim to get rid of the disadvantage and just roll straight. True. Mm. Yeah. Tully will begin to jump up and down and say, Take the boat, because then you can put the treasure on it and bring back lots of treasure. Yeah, right. That's a great idea, because we're going to find <laughs> treasure, too. not monsters or anything. Obviously, no. it's going to be treasure. <laughs> Is there enough room on the rowboat for all of us and treasure? Well, well, I'll, be, treasure we get. I'll be yep. swimming anyway. So Yeah, if there's treasure, I'll just... I'll just uh... You can just leave someone behind. Yeah, I'll just grab onto the back of the boat and uh, you can pull me. I can't Somebody pull behind. very okay. good. Uh, well, so... whatever. We'll figure it out. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, did you want to take any of the NPCs with you? Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think. Would there be any of them that would be clamoring to go? No one really seems yeah, enthused. You hear them yeah. kind of whispering. <laughs> I heard yeah. that if you go into a blue hole, you lose 10 years of your life. Yeah, you pretty much. Out? Garen is not going to ask whisper, anyone, whisper, but whisper. if they ask to join, he wouldn't stop them. No one asks to join. <laughs> well, then that's fine, yeah. I was going to say, if there's someone that seems very intrigued or like, you know, ooh, this seems really interesting, I want to go, I don't want to stop them, but if nobody seems it, then okay. no. Holy, uh, you big chicken, aren't you coming? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a chicken. Not a chicken. Well, I'm we can't on bring. Boat. We can't bring Tolly. What if he dies? Yeah. That's why we bring him, and we won't die. <laughs> you can't kill the fan favorite <laughs> oh shit I forgot about that yeah yeah um he, he begins to climb into the rowboat <laughs> what's he, the what's the seal doing the seal is still sleeping okay captain what do you want us to do with the seal it's a snorlax seal isn't it <laughs> And just I'm, let it I'm lie. I'm not that predictable, y'all. No. Okay, we will, we'll we'll leave the seal. <laughs> All right. Uh, so who's hopping into the rowboat? Oh, I am. Darren. Okay, everyone but Arlen. Uh, there's this moment as we see everyone clambering into the rowboat and the rope. It would make more sense to drop the rowboat and then everyone climbs down into it. Uh, so essentially, you all begin to climb down the side of the ship. You enter into the rowboat. Tully is there first and he rubs it in everyone's face, saying that he's not a chicken because obviously the chicken wouldn't be the first one in the boat. So whoever's last is actually the chicken. And Paul, you had offered to do the rowing, correct? Yep. <clears throat> Paul begins to row. So as we row... <clears throat> KB stands there with his, his thumbs. He's standing on, on the rowboat with his thumbs hooked in his belt. Uh, okay, so heroes, some of us are going to see a fight here. And you know, fighting in the water, it kind of makes you slow. You're going to move kind of slow. So I need to know who, who's going to be fighting. I'm going to help you out with that. Raise your hand if you're going to be fighting. You're okay, Arlen. Yeah, we don't need to worry about you, Arlen. <clears throat> so whoever raises their hand, I begin preparing a spell. And um, 
I cast this spell that includes me me doing this thing with my hands and I'm, the fingers are spinning over each other and my feet are going up and down. And then I point at each person a turn as I cast this spell. I cast Long Strider at third level. And what it does is I, I'm able to um, bespow, to, uh, bestow a increased movement rate on uh, on every person who's subjected to the spell. And casting it at third level, I can do three people. I know I'm going to do myself and then whoever else is going to fight. And if I need to, I'll, I'll cast uh, additional castings. I want to ensure those who are going to be in the water fighting can move because I think your movement rate is reduced to half if you don't mm -hmm. have a swim speed. Yes. Right? Is yeah. that true? Yep. Yep. So then it'll, it's going to give a plus 10 movement rate to um, those who it affects. So it'll, it'll help offset some of what they lose. Yep. Very good. And, uh, so I'm not sure how many that people would that be, that would be. That would the, be the three of them. Totally doesn't okay. raise his hand. Got you. And Paul, I don't know if you're going to be in water fighting. I'm a, I'm going in the water. I don't fight, you know. Okay. So I think it's four. So it'd be a third level slot and a first level slot. I'll, I'll burn to do that. Okay. Uh, as the group of you begin to encroach upon the blue hole, you see this, it's very bizarre to behold. Essentially, it just, the floor, as you're looking down, just caves in downward and it's literally what looks like a blue hole. It looks like someone just punched the sea floor and it goes down, down, down. Even those with of you that have dark vision, you can't see the bottom of it. You can't fathom how deep it goes. And... You see that there are a number of clusters of coral and kelp that grow off of the sides of it. Some things have broken off and snared in it. You see the remnants of another rowboat kind of clinging to one of these outcroppings that are uh, extending out of the sides of it. But the base of it just goes down, down, down. You. This is going to be exciting, everybody. Is everybody excited? We're going to have fun down there? We're going to see wonders? We'll tell tales that no one's ever heard. Um, and Paul is going to use his inspiring leader ability to give everyone some temp hit points. All right. Very good. Tully goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He rips his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Paul, you uh, would know it's not gets... his shirt. Yeah, he we got lots of those. Shirts They're all pirate someone. shirts. Yeah. I didn't take uh, one. <laughs> so 13 temp hit points for everybody. Oh, wow. That's nice. a lot. I like that. Thank that's you. Good. Thank you very much. Um, Stella, I know the ocean is very deep, so I probably can't see the bottom. But as a reminder, I can see up to 300 feet as dark vision. It goes beyond um, 300 feet. That's what I figured. I think, Arlen, as you look down, though, you do see that things are moving. Large, dark shapes, as KB had seen. And I, do I get a sense of what they could potentially be? They've got tails. It's really hard to tell. They're monkeys. They're not <laughs> monkeys. <laughs> There's some kind of fish, maybe, question mark. <laughs> fish, question mark, got it. Right, well, I can see there's some stuff down there. So everyone move with caution. Right. I guess we can't help and we sploosh. I nope. can't tell if Stella's face is you're doing a really dumb thing <laughs> face or <laughs> Um what can I do here? Hold on. I got some cards. <laughs> Let's see. I play one of your cards right now. Well, if there's a TPK oh, no. then our NPCs we can take them over as as characters. Right? <laughs> yeah. He's playing Tully. Mm. Okay. <laughs> um so you all cheers your kelp, bottoms up. It's a bit salty and slimy going down, but you manage to swallow it whole. And you feel almost as if your new fresh breath has 
washed into you. You taste how salty the air is, and it's not unpleasant. And if, for whatever reason, if you were to, like, grab water and try to snort it, you realize you can breathe underwater now. <laughs> nice. All right. I'm going to assume that you all dive in. Yep. As you do, we see the camera pulling out slowly as the five shapes of you begin to swim down, down, down. Tully watches from the edge of the rowboat. He scratches his ass. And that <laughs> is where we're going to take our break. Right. Uh, so we'll be back in about right. five minutes. Please join us in doing some stretchies, grabbing some snacks and all of that. And then we're going to see how this goes. Uh, mm -hmm. Be right back, y'all. Hope everyone had a good break. Uh, so as y'all begin to descend into the water here, uh, you're looking around. It's quite dark. Does anyone not have dark vision? I don't have dark I vision. I give them dark vision <laughs> via my class ability. Okay. Um, that's an aura around you, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me... Post it. Eyes of night. You have a then ten feet. Yeah. Okay. So uh, y'all will have to stick close to Arlen, but essentially, while you're close to Arlen, uh, because she is a Twilight Domain cleric, y'all can see up to three hundred feet. Okay. Very good. Uh, so uh, as the group of you are moving down into the water, it's almost it's like breathing. <laughs> Uh, it's extremely easy to move, especially with the efforts of KB's spell, with the effects of the kelp taking place. How are y'all responding to this? How are you taking this experience? Because I'm sure for some of you, this has never happened before. And you're finding it extremely easy to move. It almost feels like flying if it wasn't for the pressure of the water and the way the water moves around you question yep. um would we have a similar experience to the dream we had when we all were swimming underwater mm -hmm. i believe or if that's different i don't think I you could i don't think you were able to breathe underwater for that mm -mm. no you were no. not because that was one of the uh the offers from the hags right. one of them had offered me and i said no yeah <laughs> Yes. Mm -hmm. So okay. this is new. Was... Okay. All right. That's fine. No. Nope. Yeah, I'd say uh, from the beginning, Garen's experience, he jumped into the water and was like, "Oh, whoo, whoo, cold!" And then <laughs> it's very cold. You know, he kind of just bucked up and dove down and was struggling a little bit with the breeze, breathing water was a really awkward experience for him but after you know a little bit he did start to get the hang of it and he's swimming and he's you know starting to be okay with it okay Paul believed it would work and so he just went in and gulped the water into his lungs <laughs> and it's like what this did you tastes find so weird you do find as you're talking underwater, it's quite muffled. Sound doesn't travel as well. <laughs> Wait, what? We can talk? <laughs> Garen literally says that. We can talk, too? <laughs> you can breathe, so you can talk. This is different. How's KB doing? Oh, well, you know, KB, he's been everywhere. 340 years is a long time. So, yeah, I don't think he's too uh, offset by by this. Okay. Uh, could I get perception checks from everyone? Uh, this will be normal for Finn and KB. This will be at disadvantage. Why? Can I use my Because you can't advantage? see 300 feet. 
Uh, sure. So you get use your advantage, and you can do it at normal. But if I have regular dark vision and it's augmented by Arlen, and we're near Arlen. Oh. I can do it for a certain number of people up to my wisdom modifier, which is three. Okay. Okay. Um, Sure. Kiwi, go ahead and do this advantage then. Um, Okay. We've got 29 from Garen, a 20 from Pole, 20 from Finn, 20 from Arlen, and a 15 from KB. Okay. You all see it. You can see as you're moving forward that there are these dark shapes that are moving about and you are getting closer. You can see that there are these clumps of kelp kind of growing on the sides of this giant hole that you're swimming through. Let me actually drop all of y'all into the map here. Yay. Um, not pictured is the... Uh, the kelp or anything, but just imagine that there are walls coming up around you as you're swimming down. Do you just swim down, down, down? Do you stop to look at the kelp? What's going on here? And you do see about literally on the edge of your vision, 300 feet away are these swimming dark shapes. Paul's probably sense. struggling to, to keep up, so he's just trying to follow the group because he doesn't have a swim speed and doesn't have the uh, the long strider on. No, you do. I, I, I oh, used another okay. slot. Yeah, I used oh, another okay. slot. I want to be sure that anybody who's going to be fighting in the water, potentially fighting, is, is covered. Arlen doesn't need it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> she doesn't have the penalty that we do. Mm-hmm. Plus, we don't want to encourage her or make her faster. <laughs> <laughs> I would rush ahead. Absolutely. That's what happened um, with the hag fight. Yeah. <laughs> so you said there's kelp? Yeah. yeah. I think Finn will be interested in the kelp first because he'll see that the other stuff is really far away, but he'll see that the kelp is kind of nearby. And he kind of just, this is all new experience. He kind of just wants to, I guess, take it in a little bit and just kind of look in the kelp. Plus, you know what? If we eat more kelp, we can just stay under here as long as we like. Is is this kelp also magical? Yes, the same I don't, kelp we had. I I don't know that it's the same kelp. <laughs> uh, I, I didn't think so, but yeah. Right, right, yeah, I, I knew that. <laughs> That's all right. Let, let's stay together in groups. Um, probably good, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, I agree. Say that's the edges of the blue hole ish. Yay. Well, we need to stay near Arlen or else we can't see nothing. Yeah, Arlen. We're gonna, we're Are gonna you go driving in the Arlen. middle? Driving, <laughs> swimming through the middle? What's going on here? We'll say that. Yeah, I guess I would be. Okay. We'll say that the kelp kind of clustered like on the edges like we'll say there's like one here and there's like one here another one here where's the bottom okay so you swim past the kelp and you begin to continue downwards we'll say that as you get to about 200 feet 250 feet away from the shapes they begin to stop and hover They seem to be looking out towards the group of you as well. But from the body language, they don't seem to be able to pick you out. Or they're not, like, getting aggressive. They seem to be curious. Do we make out body shapes? Do they appear as fish, like maybe whales? Or do they appear like they have tentacles? Can we make that out? Um, at 250 feet away, you can definitely tell that they have arms and they have a long body, but they mm. are very big. In very like big, how just, very big? Like yeah. the size of horses. Okay, they're oh, large. Okay. They're not colossal. Yeah. Good. Definitely not whales. <laughs> Maybe sharks. 
too big to be merfolk? Are they Sahagen? <laughs> Maybe. I gotta look at how big Sahagen are. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're too big to be Sahagen. Okay. Um, gonna keep going down. Okay. As you get to 200 feet, you can see them. They are these... They, they they have weapons. Uh, they are these humanoid beings, and you can see that they have these long, snout-like faces, and they have tentacles growing off of them. They seem to have a number of fins, some growing out from their uh, collarbones, and they are tipped on the edges of their elbows. And uh, they have these long, serpentine bodies as you see them. But they don't oh. see you. We ran into that? these in which light? Not that I was like, oh, we've seen these before, but other campaign. <laughs> the ogres. Are, are they good guys? Uh, anybody who wants to do a history check, you can to see if you recognize what these are. Can I have um, advantage? Yes, Arlen, you get advantage. How about a twenty-nine on a history check? Okay, you freaking <laughs> <Wow>. nerd. <laughs> <laughs> nerd nerd oh, Finn rolled a one I have an advantage actually... on that <laughs> damn it um, so that's going to be a six from Finn a 15 from Garen a 14 from Arlen a 16 from Paul and a 29 from KB uh, KB you know exactly what these are they are marrow uh, you know that marrow are monstrous beings. They are literally monstrosities. Uh, you know that they are bloodthirsty. They go about and they raid and destroy. And uh, they have demonic origins. Um, you know that they tend to live in caves and they hoard treasures with trophies. These are all bad guys. Gotta take them out. All right. Well. Wow. Well, I mean, they're still like two hundred feet though. away, right? Mm -hmm. They begin to slowly swim towards you. You can see them beginning to move up. So we'll continue moving down towards them. Okay. Effectively, the way we will treat this is that you'll have a surprise round because you can see them and they can't see you. Nice. So we tell do, do they are their weapons appear to be reach weapons? Um, I will tell you in a minute. Uh, <laughs> they are equipped mm -hmm. with harpoons, which are definitely ranged weapons. Ooh, okay. So, so maybe a tactic is we need to stay together. If they had long weapons, and maybe we need to spread apart. But if they harpoon us, then we could ah! be in trouble. Yeah. Oh boy! Oh, I I don't uh, I don't disagree there, KB. All right, <clears throat> time to put on the combat music because it's time to fight stuff. Yeah. No, I don't like that song. They're all within. Uh, you're gonna have to disregard that. They are 200 feet away right now. Oh. Down below. It's kind of hard to do 3D fighting on a 2D True. map. 2D map. True. Uh, do be that way. I can get to 105 feet without going off the map completely. <laughs> <laughs> Try it. I did a lot of uh, 3D underwater stuff in some of my games, and I I made the I added an extra like stat to the token that that was altitude so you can use it for flying too and you can just say like how far up they are and decide which part is like the baseline or whatever and be plus or minus from there uh-huh uh, i'm gonna <laughs> put that they are 200 feet away from you we'll count whatever your distance is right now as zero 
All right, uh, I'm gonna need some initiative rolls from everyone. Please make sure you select your tokens. No, I do that all the time. There we go. Three twelfths. <laughs> okay, you want me to re-roll that stellar? Or I got you. you. Okay. Wow, you also got twelve. Oh, four twelves. Oh. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Very good. All right. Uh, so you all get a surprise round. Oh. Yeah, we'll say that you get a surprise round. Um. Finn, you are first. They are 200 uh, feet away. Um. Okay. Uh. With the surprise round, with them being so far away, is it just I get to close the distance faster before they notice me? If you want, you can also delay your action if you like. Um, from the way that they're swimming towards you guys, uh, they seem to be moving kind of fast. Okay, so. Probably they'll catch up to us before we would catch up to them. Yes, and you also know that they have ranged weapons. Okay. Um. Yeah. Then what I will do. Um. Some looking. I know that we discussed about water, like different le weapons we can use in water. Hmm. Would a hand axe be one that would cut through water, or would it still be under disadvantage? Uh, for melee weapons. It's only a dagger, javelin, short sword, spear, or trident that works. Okay, then either one of my... Um... I'll copy-paste this again, just so it's okay. up front and center. No worries. Okay, then. I guess either one of my weapons would be a disadvantage. So I'll just get my great club ready, and mm -hmm. then what I'll probably do um, once they're closer is that uh, once I can finally see one coming to attack me, I'll probably uh, do like an extra like twist or like hold Hata and tight to um, my club for a second and put Hunter's Mark on my club so that the first time I get hit, the Hunter's Mark will be within the club, so whatever I hit will get at least a little extra something since I'm at disadvantage. Okay, uh, I think you have to target a creature with Hunter's Mark. Let me oh, see what I? the distance is. Hold on. I can post Hunter's Mark. It's 90 room. feet. Um, okay. So if you want to... Hunter's Mark's a bonus, actually. Uh, so you can only prepare an action. I'll, I'll say that you can prepare a bonus action if you want, but if you do, then you can't okay. use your action. I just to prepare. I thought I remembered us using it before, where I was able to put it on my actual great club, the hunter's mark. But if not, then I'll just ready my great, great club, and we'll just call it my hold action that. Okay, sounds good. Uh, it is the marrow's turn. Uh, they will all dash. Uh, oh, we got a surprise round. You're right. It's not the marrow's turn. <laughs> Garen, you're up. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, I forget. Yeah, Garen's choice is honestly going to depend on Arlen. You can talk for a free action. Yeah. Arlen, are you descending or are you holding? Descending. All right. So Garen is going to use his bonus action as a dash action and move we got so what half movement so 15 then he dashed we've got <clears throat> half movement plus 10 for long strider so 25 if... so he would move 50 mm -hmm. yep. he would move down 50 and then hold his action to shoot the first one that comes within range within 80 feet Okay. Karen, minus 50 feet. Just put that there. This could get go. confusing very quickly. Okay. Yes, it is. All right. Uh, okay. Pole, it is your turn. Uh, Pole is going to cast Blade Ward. Oh, very nice. On himself, yeah. And then move towards the closest one. Okay. Uh, so you will be able to move 25 feet. All right. Okay. 
Uh, do does your blade ward glow at all? Yeah, it mm. it does. It looks like um, it looks like sparkles from Penny Whistle. I love it. Okay. He... She protects me from everything. <laughs> is your blade ward just Penny, just kind of like just <laughs> denying, oh, yes. spinning around Maybe you, just slapping away? It's like no, <laughs> don't hurt Paul. No. <laughs> cool. KV, it is your turn. Roger. So, so as a bonus action, I use I in, enable my blade song. So, what that looks like is is a military kata. Is basically I I go through these these postures, these gestures with my weapons that I've got out, and the weapons that I've um, infused with my enchantments today are a short sword and a trident. <clears throat> and um, I I look over to pull. Stay close to Arlen. We, we need to stay together. We don't want to get separated. And I follow Arlen closely, and I ready my trident. If, as my action, if somebody comes within range, I'm going to throw my my magic trident. And range for the trident is 80 feet. Okay. Very cool. No, 60. 60? 60? Okay, mm -hmm. very cool. So my movement right now, swimming, is effectively... 30. Okay, go 30 feet down. Swimming 30. Okay. Yep. Arlen, it's your turn. Muted. I'm swimming down 30 feet. And then going to hold my action for a guiding bolt um, for if one of them gets in range. Okay. Um, you will see that the Sahagin all have these very distinct markings on their shoulders, and they seem to be streaks of color. Conveniently, the colors that you see here on the screen, there's one with <laughs> yellow stripes, one with purple stripes, orange, green. Uh, that's supposed to be blue. Sorry, pink. And then a red one as well. Um, okay, so you're ready your action. Very good. Finn, it's your turn. Um. Oh, um. Can. As well, can I sort of see if anyone's approaching any closer? Like, so you had I a surprise what... round. And now they're going to be able to move closer. Uh, you okay. are currently at the zero feet depth, the equivalent of the zero feet depth. Uh, okay. And then all of the varying depths are above you. Okay. So essentially, you would be able to move 25 feet. Um, if you wanted to use uh, your dash movement, you could go to 50 feet. Garen is the deepest down so far. Yeah, I think I'll join. Does my... Um... Would that count? I know that KB gave me the whatever it is, so the, my running speed isn't at half. That's um, that's doing all the math already for you. Oh, okay. Well, then yeah, I'll do the I'll do what Garen did then. Okay. Because I already have an action ready anyway. Uh, this is a new round, so your action is a it's a new action. Oh, okay. Well, then yeah, I'll just go down to the fifty feet. Okay. It's gonna be your whole turn. That's fine. Um, it is now the Marrow's turn. Uh, you see them all beginning to swarm around you and uh, swarm around in different directions, and they're all swimming up. They're going to dash 80 feet, so they're all going to be 120 feet. Can they're I... now in range. They are now in range. Which one do you want to shoot at? I want to shoot the red one. Okay, that's really cool. Go ahead and roll to attack with your guiding bolt. Fourteen. Fourteen is a hit. Nice. Roll some damage, please. Oof. Eight points of damage, but they're now glowing. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, you see Never as this... Next has you see this light just kind of smash into it, and it, there's this piercing, wailing uh, cry through the water, this gargle of pain, and you see that the blow leaves quite a, a, a deep groove in the scales. It seems to have burned away some of its flesh, so it was a pretty good hit amount of damage. Uh, and it is now outlined in what color? Um, pink. Okay, very nice. All right. Um, as you kind of wheel around to throw that at the red one, can you roll me a perception check? Sure. Okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> Great. That's what Gar I love to hear. <laughs> Garen, it's your turn. All right. Um, well, they're still too far away, and Garen did not really think accurately about what he was doing, and he's now out of the range of the aura and cannot see. <laughs> so he's going to go back up to uh, Arlen. Okay. She's only 20 feet away from you. It's The aura is 10 feet away. Yes. So do you want to so move 10 go... feet closer? Yes. Okay. So you move up to the 40 foot, and uh, you're now in range of her buff. Yep. And again, going to hold his action, wait for one to get within 80 feet of him. Okay. They, they are in 80 feet of you. They're 120 feet. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, they're minus 120 and minus 40. So yeah. he would have... Yeah, he couldn't see him before. Now we can see him. Yeah. Um, he's going to shoot red. Okay. Very good. Uh, So you're going to shoot with your bow? Yes. Okay, so you have advantage because of the guiding bolts. So you get to roll this normally. Right. Okay, 14 is a hit. Oh, Do you I get this get sneak attack? I don't think yeah, you I do. Because I technically don't right? have advantage. Yeah, right? so it takes 12 damage. Uh, you see the arrow smash into its shoulder, and there's this dark, inky cloud of blood just pouring out of it, and it's uh, obfuscating the water around him. He's bleeding terribly. Right. Um, Garen probably can't hide right now, so... No, you're in straight in the He's... middle. You do see, like, the kelp yeah. is kind of, like, on the edges. You could definitely hide in those if you wanted, but then you'd have... you ha couldn't see. Yeah, you couldn't see. So, yeah. That's his turn. Okay. Pole, it is your turn. Pole will do the same thing as last turn. He's gonna go 25 more feet and... He's going to cast Blade Ward. Okay, so Oops. you're at 50 feet. All right. Very good. KB, it's your turn. Okay, so I can see 60 feet with my dark vision. The closest opponent is uh, is 90 feet for me. Yeah. And my range of my trident is only 60 anyways. So right now I don't see anything. And I see, I see other people, you know, looking. And, and I'm probably like... Arlen, Arlen, where, where are they? And she might be pointing in, in, in the directions where they are, right? So what I do... Well, right now, and as of this moment, you are close enough to Arlen that you get the buff, so you can see all of them. Yeah, I think that it was limited how many people she could buff. She couldn't buff everybody. So uh, since I've done... You were, since I, we already yeah, established that you were buffed, though. Or buffed. Okay. So, you Gucci... Okay. So right now, uh, nobody is within range. Which direction is Arlen going? I see she was targeting red. Is she headed that direction? Um, I think she's more just heading like straight down, kind of, and letting them come to her. Okay. So with that, what I'm going to do is I am going to... I'm going to move a little bit. Um, 
no, it's not worth it. I'm going to hold, I'm going to uh, hold my location and I'm going to hold an action. My action is to throw my trident. Once one of them comes within range, I'm going to throw my, my magical trident. So notionally that'd be on their next turn if they get closer. Okay. Very yeah. good. Uh, what's the range on your trident? 60 feet. Okay. So as Very soon as you come within 60 feet. Yep. That's definitely going to be on their next turn. Okay. Arlen, it's your turn. Perfect. Um, I'm going to hit the red one with another guiding bolt. Ooh, okay. Uh, armor class on these guys is 13. That definitely hits. 24. 10 damage. Why do I keep rolling two ones? <laughs> <laughs> Again, uh, this light explodes. I think as Arlen's casting this guiding bolt, all of you can just see this pure light just cutting through the darkness of this murky depth. And it smashes into this marrow here and it is completely enveloped in this pink light again. It definitely looks like it can't take one of those again. Okay, I'm gonna swim down to the 40 foot mark. Okay. Very good. All right. Uh, would, would I be able to follow? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay, because I would say like because this is all kind of happening at the same time, I think it's it's fair, especially because it's kind of pain in the ass. Uh, Finn, it's your turn. Okay. Um, I think Finn will notice that um Garen kind of moved up by him, and kind of realized, oh yeah, the the sight, and then he'll probably go. Well, right now back. Arlen has moved close enough; you can see three hundred feet now. Oh, okay. Well, then never mind. Um. Because the I'm number go... to pay attention to is where is Arlen? So, like, she's at 40 feet, and the distance of her buff is uh, 10 feet. Okay. Um, I think then I'll just... Yeah, I think at this point... Because um, I want to keep the sight. So I think I'll hold um, my, great, uh, my great club action until one of them gets within whatever it is, 30 feet or whatever the case. Okay. Because I really don't know what else to do in the in this case. Okay. They're definitely coming up. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, the marrow begin to move forward with their advance. Uh, they are going to do another dash action. Uh, so they are all going to move 80 feet closer, and this is going to trigger some people's things. <clears throat> um. <clears throat> Oh, let me do math here. That make them at 40 feet, right? Yeah. Something like that, I think, yeah. <clears throat> yes. Okay. Uh, so, KB, they swim into yes. range. Excellent. <clears throat> um, now, the, the red one, it was just struck by a guiding bolt, right? Mm -hmm. So it is a glow, and I do believe anybody who attacks it would have advantage on the next attack. Yes. Right. So as it comes into range, I think it's probably beyond my normal range. Is that long range? Normally that causes disadvantage, but that'd be offset by the um, the guiding bolt. Yep. So straight straight up attack with my my trident. I, I throw this thing out, and it looks like a twenty four. Oh my god, that hits. Mm. So 11 points of piercing damage as this thing shunks into it. And as it does, it shimmers for a moment, and then shink, it reappears in my hand. It is infused with returning property. That's really good, because you oh. killed it. <laughs> and it begins to sink. Nice. Uh, yeah, so you see this explosive, uh, this explosive cloud, bloody mist as it connects the marrow in the throat and it begins to fall back down. It doesn't seem to be moving anymore. Let me get a perception check from you as you attack this red one here. Perception sucks. I'll actually get 18. one from Garen too because you attacked the red one on your last turn. Okay, that's a 10 from KB. You don't see anything. Garen, you do see something. Um, you see that there's another dark shape over in this direction, 
and it's much smaller. Uh, you see that there is a, uh, a smaller bed of kelp over here. Like, over here. Something's hiding there. We'll say that it's at, um... Say that it's at a depth of 60 feet. So it's only about 20 feet away from you, Garen. There's something in that kelp over there, he says. Okay. And now it's your turn. All right. So... Oh, sorry. Yeah, Before I do that, did anyone else have anything? Uh, no, no, no. We're good. Okay, H go ahead. Held actions? Okay. No. Not at 40 feet. No. So, Red is dead. <laughs> Garen is gonna turn on yellow and take a chance and use steady aim. And okay. hopefully Arlen doesn't dive too far. <laughs> And he's going to shoot at yellow with normal. Okay. It's another 12 pin. Wow, that's max on regular hit. Two rolls in a row. Okay. No, it takes 12 I, damage. Yeah, it would have been 11 on the attack, not 14. Oh, nope. Uh, 11 does not okay. hit. Yeah, you see the Red arrow, boy. like cut through the air and deftly swims out of the way. Um, yeah, so essentially, those of you who are at 40 feet, they're basically like level with you now. And how far away are they? <clears throat> uh, now we'll use the actual map plane. So, for example, uh, the yellow one's 25 feet away from Finn. The pink one is 15 feet from you. KB ETC. Sweet. Okay. Um, yeah, unfortunately, what does steady aim do for you? It gives you... It gives us advantage, but I can't move gotcha. this round. Okay. Hole, it is your turn. Uh, you are at 50 feet, so you they are 10 feet above you now. Plus whatever distance they are uh, horizontally. All right, well... Hole is going to pull out a caterpillar cocoon that he has in inside his um, pockets. He say, "Well, what do you want to be today?" And he's going to uh, start twisting the the caterpillar cocoon open, and he casts his spell on the purple one. Okay. The spell is. Polymorph. I'm going to try and turn him into a starfish. Oh my god, oh. I love this. Okay. That's so cool. Wisdom saving throw. Oh, I need to make it uh, visible. Never whisper rolls, please. Okay. Wisdom! Nine, it fails. Okay. <laughs> I don't have a starfish, <laughs> so I will draw one. Um, yeah. Ooh. Hole's gonna swim over and put it in his pocket. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't think I can reach that far. Though. I don't think He's you a can. Too far away. I should have picked a closer one. But anyways, I'm gonna swim that direction. Okay. Uh, you are below it, so you can. Actually, get no. To... I'll stay where I am because I can't see if I go that far. Yeah. So I'll just yeah. Stay where I am. I'm gonna actually swim up to be beside Arlen. Okay. Very good. That's a very smart idea. Um. Okay. Uh. Yeah. You just see the starfish beginning to slowly fall down. I love that so much. That's so good. Catch a falling star. Yeah. <laughs> but you can't put it in your pocket. <laughs> Oh. KV, it is now your turn. Yes. So, um, wh who's been targeted here recently on my side? Pink or green? Um, Anybody so far? These two are unscathed. You s might have noticed that uh, Garen missed trying to hit the yellow one. Well, I'm going to work my side. I'm kind of worried that um, 
one of them might come at pole and I, I don't want them to glomp on the pole. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm gonna work on the, the pink one will be my target for my uh, my trident. Okay. And um, I technically get two attacks around now that I'm a, uh, a level five artificer. So I'm gonna throw my trident twice. Okay, sounds good. 14's a hit. Sweet. 13 points of damage. Okay. And how's he looking after after the trident piece? Uh, that took a big chunk out of him. Um, I'm going to try to finish him with the second, second yeah. throw. Okay. 13, 13 is a hit. 12 nice. damage. Okay. Yeah. Um. You see that the trident, as it snaps back into your... Or it disappears it and then reappears. Uh. Yeah. You see these wounds where the trident has... Uh, pierced into it they're bleeding profusely and the marrow is thrashing in pain but it still seems to be trying to swim forward sweet i'll move myself just a little bit in front just to kind of okay. like intercede okay very good arlen it's your turn all right um I am going to Eldritch Blast, the one that um, KB just hit. Okay. And I get two bolts. Mm -hmm. They and both, both hit. hit. 22 and 24. I keep rolling ones. Okay, eight points of damage. Okay. That's for both of them? The sea, yeah, the sea lily suddenly, like, is this spectral form in the water rushing towards um, the marrow and crashing into it twice. Very good. Uh, it seems to be confused at this light that's coming towards it. It tries to grab the first one. I think that's why it only does one point of damage because it smashes into their palm and they recoil. And the other one hits them straight in the chest. And he seems very winded. Uh, and you that's that where we'll call my turn. Gotcha. Uh, I'll stay here. Okay. From amidst the kelp here, something moves. It's a turtle. Comes. turtle. Something turtle. totally non-threatening. <clears throat> Who's it going to attack? <laughs> Arlen. Um, yeah, that's valid. Okay. Uh, you see... You see this violent green light beginning to snake through the water at alarming speed. Something, a projectile, rushes through, cuts through the water as it casts Ray of Sickness. 15 doesn't hit you, I think. Uh, yeah, that's just barely a miss. So it does hit you. No, it misses. Okay, it My misses. AC is 16. Very good. Uh, you see that it just snakes right past your head. You're able to dodge out of the way just in time. It remains hidden, whatever the source is. Don't look at the name in, ch in, in the Roll20 chat. You don't see it. Uh, Finn, it's your turn. You muted. I'm sorry. Um, I was just looking. So 25 feet. Would that that would be in range for my for my great club, right? Um. Under the water, or do I need to get closer? Great club. Water? I think they have a reach of. Is it a five or ten? Oh, is it? Unless you want to throw it as an improvised oh. weapon. No. <laughs> is great club one word? It is. Yes, it is. It does not have reach. So you have to be within five feet. 
Ah, okay. Um, well... You can, you can swim to it. I can swim to it. Um, I think with my me already having some form of dark vision, I won't be completely blind. Um, just right. not as... I just won't be able to see as good. Yeah. So I'll... Because, yeah, 20... 25 is not my full movement, right? 25 is your full movement. <laughs> okay, would I still be able to well, hit it, or would I just be standing next to it? You'd be, You'd be floating to... next to it, yeah. So you can hit it if you want. Okay, then yeah. Then I'll move to, I guess, right here, and then yep. I'll hit it with my great club. Okay, and you do get two attacks. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah so swing! 21? That hits. Armor class is 13, so it takes 11 bludgeoning damage. Oh, wait. Right. Sorry. These are at disadvantage, but the 19 still hits. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then we'll say canonically that um, Finn hit the left side and he's going to aim for the right side. Kind of do like a. Okay. Move. Yeah, yeah. Kinda... All right. 13, 13 hits. Yep. That's right on the money. Oh, 13 is the money. Okay. I forgot what the money was. Yeah. Right, cool. Like nice you, s you find as you're swinging, it's so hard to move through the water, all the resistance, but you're able to power through it. You feel your muscles bulging. This is a really cool epic moment for you. You just smash and then you do it again Whoa. on the other side, smash. And even though this creature is like the size of a horse, you are doing a number on him. He, they are thrashing about and you see them readying their harpoon. Uh, I believe that's your turn. That's my turn. And Finn will be like, Oh, I'll take you down, buddy. <laughs> it says, I don't speak common. <laughs> blah, 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 I don't blah, know blah. what you're saying. Water noises. <laughs> <laughs> no, water noises. I know water noises. Water noise is right back at you. Um, okay, it is now the Marrow's turn. We'll start with the one that's on you. Uh, it has a multi-attack. It's going to no. try to bite you and then use its claw on you. I uh, am not food. What's your armor class? I think that... Hold on. Oh, uh, that just hit barely... That Yeah, that it... It hits. Okay. Uh, really, the mouth, you see the tentacles just thrashing about in the water. The mouth comes forward. It takes a big bite out of your shoulder. You take 10 piercing damage, and then it tries to claw you, another 17 to hit, and then it slashes you right across the chest for six damage. So that's 16 Four, total. Five, six. Thank God for that 13 uh, temporary yep. points. <laughs> Don't forget you all have temporary hit points, so you only take three damage total. Yeah, I took only three damage total. Ooh. Okay, the starfish <laughs> continues starfishing down just very gently. Um, okay, where's my ruler? Do, 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 that's enough. Uh, you'll see that this marrow comes rushing forward and it will try to attack Harlan. <laughs> um, it'll try to attack you for the same thing, try to bite you. 22 is a hit, you take 12 piercing damage, and it tries to claw you, a 15 is gonna miss. Mm -hmm. um, and then this green one is going to surge forward and try to hit you, KB. Uh, it's going to try to bite you. Exactly. 12. Yeah. And it claws you for 25. Mm. Sure. Mm. So close. My armor class is 23. Oh, fuck. I know, right? That's called Blade Jesus. Singer, baby. Yeah, I'm wearing Okay, well, armor. 25 <laughs> is bigger than 23, so you take 12 I'm, slashes. I'm checking to see if I have a shield <laughs> spell. I, yeah, um, <clears throat> I burn a first level spell slot as a reaction, and it gives mm -hmm. me, for the duration of this round, five additional points of okay. uh, armor class. I'm so armor class 28. It's trying to <laughs> slash you. What do we see as you act activate shield? <clears throat> Yeah, so I get this this trident. I just kind of, I just kind of go like this. It, it's like a big fork, right? I just kind of uh -huh. go like this, and I kind of look at him like, really. And what happens is there's this, this uh, visual, this transparent, um, almost like a shell, like a like an egg that appears around me, and I was, uh, it's co covered in scales like like a fish, and appear and it's kind of around me for the. Okay, love it. Cool stuff. 
Uh, this... Magic. Magic. Uh, this guy gets a little closer. And then he will... Alright, who beat him up? It was... Yeah, target me. Target me. Okay. Sure. Uh, so it's going to use his harpoon. 14's a miss. You can try to bite too if you want. You see, it lifts up this gun. Where did this guy get a harpoon? You don't know. He shoots. You see the harpoon go and it hits nothing. And then immediately he begins to crank it back. Um, okay, that's going to be the end of their turn. Garen, it's now your turn. All right. Garen is going to take another shot at yellow. Okay. Using steady aim to negate the disadvantage. Okay, this is and since normal. Finn is a threatening square, he gets sneak attack. You're right. Okay, 27 oh. is a hit. You do 23 damage. Yeah. What does this look like? Um, I'd say this happens like Finn bonks him on the each arm. And then as Finn's, like, bringing the Great Club back to get ready, Garen looses the arrow, and it zips right over Finn's head and hits the marrow right right in the mouth. Uh, yeah. Finn, you, you feel the, the water cut above you. Uh, this arrow flies. I was gonna say, <laughs> if, we could, if we could change that a bit, um, could we do... Because I know it attacked me after I hit it with the Great Club, right? And oh, it did bite right. me. It bit me, right? Uh huh. So let's say it clawed me, it bit me, and as it bit me, that's when the arrow went right into the head. There we go. I love it. That's yeah. Good action sequence. Yeah, you see the force of it getting struck by the arrow. It begins to fall back, and it's beginning to sink now. Nice shot. Oh, good, good show. And then Garen shouts, "Finn, kelp northeast." On it. Points this way. Yep. Cool. Pull. It is now your turn. So Paul is going to <clears throat> point at this one here and and do a little come here there, come <laughs> come see me. Come check it out. I got something you might like. And um he's gonna cast enthrall <laughs> that guy. Okay. Um, this is a wisdom saving throw. Gets oh. advantage on it. But that doesn't look like it helps. I uh, think that affects multiple creatures of your choice. Any creature, let's see. Within range that can hear you. Creatures of your choice. Yeah, so you can choose to target all three of them if you want. Sure, I will. Okay, so that was the green one. Here's the orange one, and here's the pink one. Okay, they all fail. You see, almost synchronized, the heads snap, and they each look right at you, Paul. Mm -hmm. Yep. Anything else for your turn? That's all. Okay. They're, they're on the way. Just you wait. Okay, KB, it's your turn. You see that uh, the marrow in front of you, they all look right at Paul. Mm. Does does that give us others some distinct advantage? They have to somebody? try to see you, that's all. So they, they're all going to come after me. You can position yourselves accordingly. <clears throat> so in other words, they're, they're all now targeting or, or going to go mm -hmm. towards him. Mm -hmm. But if but is they it, want, is they it can be aggressive? nice. Yeah, it, could, it it is not necessarily. Are they no. showing aggressive measures at this point? Hmm. <clears throat> it, doesn't it doesn't matter. say anything about charming them. It doesn't change their attitude or anything. No. It just makes me the most important thing. Yeah. They need to make, they get disadvantage on trying to perceive any other creature. So essentially you all kind of fade from view from what they can see and they only see you pull essentially. Okay. It doesn't change what I'm going to do, but I was, I want to be sure that I do the right thing. So 
Okay. Mr. Pink is going to get my repeated attention. I feel like <laughs> it would be a fair argument to say, like, if something can't see you, you get advantage. See, it doesn't make them blind. They can see you guys. They just get disadvantage if they had to try to see you. Okay. So technically, so I think you're, they can still see everyone, but if you are hiding, say, in the kelp forest, there you go. then it would be, they'd have disadvantage trying to see you in your Yeah, moment. yeah. Okay, that's true. Well, All I'm right. not hiding right now, Mr. Pink. <clears throat> so I think a 25 probably hits. The trident lashes out. Or... Tell me what this looks like. So, yes. D do these guys need to die? I yes. Okay. <laughs> so he gets poked right in the chest with this this trident. It's a deep thunk. <clears throat> and then he's dead. Yeah. And then shunk, and then throw it at the next one. Okay. Um, these Actually, guys it's are green, in green guy. Yeah, yep. they. If you're gonna throw it, it's a. It won't be a throw. Okay. It, will, it won't be a throw. It'll be a stab. Throw. All right, poke. Stabby stab. Green. So fourteen points. Very good. Um, a ripping tear with the trident on green. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it thrashes against it. Struggles to see you. Anything else on your turn? Nope. Okay. Arlen, it is your turn. Okay. Um, I'm gonna do a sneaky. Do your sneaky. Do it. So I'm gonna swim over here. And then I'm gonna use Thunder Step to shock both of these with thunder damage. Okay. And then teleport back here. <laughs> All right. I love it. Okay. They must make constitution saving throws. So I'm going to roll for the green one. And I'm going to roll for the orange one. They both fail. 69. <laughs> nice. Okay. Um. So that is 3d10 thunder damage. It is. 11 damage each. Okay. I'm rolling real bad on damage this session. You are. That sucks. Um, okay, yeah. So what is it? What what does your thunder damage look like? Yeah, so I just kind of like swim between and around them really quick. I'm suddenly getting away from my friendly group. Mm -hmm. And then this like air bubble kind of like a, a cool animation sequence where suddenly I just like disappear and this big like air bubble kind of expands in the middle of the ocean and kind of like claps closed um, as like this shock of electricity kind of like spans and spins in the water um, and suddenly I'm back with my friends and they can see in the darkness again. <laughs> Fantastic. I love it. Uh, you see that the one with green stripes looks pretty messed up. The one with orange stripes, this is the first damage that it's taken. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Um, that's my turn. Okay, very good. Uh, from the kelp. Let's see. Okay, uh, you see a hand gnarled and covered in barnacles reach out from the kelp and point right towards Pole as it casts Lightning Bolt. Oh, shit. Five feet wide blast. Nice! It hits all of... It's going to attempt to hit all of you... Oh, that's so cool! Okay, I need a dexterity saving throw from all four of you. Finn, you're fine. You need so. to beat a... Sure. <clears throat> DC zero? No, it's not zero. Hold on. Um... <laughs> Thirteen. Okay. 
Uh, Arlen doesn't save. Everybody else saves. So you take half damage. Arlen takes... Oh, yes, Garen. Garen has evasion, so he takes no damage from that. Okay, awesome. Uh, so everybody else takes half damage. Arlen takes full damage. We roll 8d6 lightning. That's 18 damage. So Let's go. Bad wow. rolls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, I, on oh your my side God. Too. I rolled so many threes. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. I rolled five threes and three ones. What the? <laughs> I'll take it. Dice. Whoa. The dice are just on Arlen's side of like what one. What the heck? Three. Okay, Arlen <laughs> takes eight. Everyone else takes 18. Garen takes zero. You see this lightning bolt. It shoots out this red crack of color and burning magic as it rips through the ocean. Oh, that marrow needs to roll a dexterity saving throw too. Oh, yeah. Oh, hmm. he fails. Zorch. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, you see that the marrow on the opposite side of you, Arlen, as you dive out of the way, uh, you see that where you had been, it just cra lightning cracks through and it smashes directly into the chest of this marrow here. He takes full damage. Does not nice. look very good. Now they both look fucked up. Nice. Finn, it's your turn. You saw the um, kelp shoot. Yep. Damage, so I have to make a concentration save to keep my um, polymorph spell up. Oh. So yes, do right please now. do that. Sorry. We're good. Good. 21. You're good. All right, Finn, you just saw the kelp over there shoot some lightning and it hit all your friends except Garen. Garen's fine. Garen's always fine. Um, <laughs> I'll um, kind of, as he's kind of, he's, I'll just say that he had like pointed me in the other direction, then dodged the thing. Um, or took no damage, and then I will just swim, because I'm assuming, when he pointed in a direction, I'm assuming, in my mind, it's the same thing that the the light came from. So in my mind, because I'm not sure with my dark vision if I could, couldn't see it all that much. So I'm You can just see the direction, the so it's fine. Okay, yeah. So, alright, then I'll just go ahead and head in that direction as much as I can. Okay. Uh, whatever, however long, yeah. Uh, 25 feet will get you halfway there. You can uh, use a dash which will eat up your action, and you'll be right there in front of it. Okay, we'll just do that then. Okay, so you get to, you swim right up to the front of it, and because you're right close here, enough, or... yeah, because you're close okay. enough, you can see that there is some sort of humanoid here. Uh, at, they're definitely some kind of monstrous being. Uh, but they're hidden in the kelp. Let me try this again. Uh... A history check? Yeah, um, just trying to see if I know what it is. Yeah, I'm, with an I'm 18, good at history. <laughs> yeah, with an 18 history, I'll say you realize that this is a hag. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, fantastic. Actually, <laughs> what he'll say I to himself. This? Okay, um... All right, I think this is applicable. Uh, so horrifying appearance will trigger as you're close enough to see the hag now. Uh, mm -hmm. You must make me a DC 11 wisdom saving throw or that you get fair? scared. Wisdom, where are you? Oh, okay, okay, well, you then I'm fail. scared. Uh, so what frightened means is that you can't move closer to it. You don't have to run away. But you just can't move closer to it. And if you try to hit it, you get disadvantage, which you already have disadvantage because of the water. So it doesn't really, it literally double just doesn't do anything. <laughs> okay. No, double disadvantage is not a thing. Um, okay. So it kind of doesn't really matter. You just can't. It's Finn frown. I think, I think it just, Finn winces it's spooky. because. Well, I think what will happen canonically, so it's just not nothing, is that Finn will just be taken aback by it. Like a little bit because he's seen it in books. Like he's done. I'm using a lot of the history as just random research I've done looking for zombies and stuff. But also, hey, these are interesting little side things I want to look at. And mm -hmm. so we'll say that I've seen them in books before, but this is the first time I've ever seen it in person. You saw a hag in the weird shared dream that y'all had. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's so right. maybe he'll be freaked out because this will look exactly like the same one in his dream, mm -hmm. and it'll freak him out about like, oh, I saw that in my dream. I didn't know that was real. <laughs> like, just <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is the first time you're seeing one in the flesh, so to speak. Yeah, Makes yeah, sense. yeah. 
Okay. Um, so you use your action to move mm -hmm. forward. Okay. It is now the Marrow's turn. Uh, we'll see that this they're they're enthralled, so they're going to try to hit Pole. Uh, the orange one is going to try to bite you, Pole. What is your armor class? Twelve. Twelve. Okay, thirteen hits you. That's eight piercing damage. Go ahead and roll me a constitution saving throw, please. Sixteen. Okay, it continues. Uh, and then it claws at you with nineteen, so you take six slashing damage. I believe you have to do a constitution save for every yeah. source of damage you take. Okay, and then it fails. Uh -oh. Uh, so you lose control of your polymorph spell here as you take 14 slashing and piercing damage. Um, this one here is going to try to look at KB. Uh, so it has disadvantage on a perception check here. Oops, this is the wrong sheet. Why am I looking at that? Perception is a wisdom. Five, it doesn't see you, KB. Uh, so it's going to try to swim around uh, to pull. You get an attack of opportunity here, KB. Sweet. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, it takes get his attention. 10 damage. Um, okay, uh, and then because you hit it, I think it's going to try to hit you at disadvantage here. I'll just do a quick little bite. 17 doesn't hit you. Nope. All right, um, that's going to be the end of its turn. Garen, you're up. All right, so... Garen is... Hmm. He knows what's in the kelp is... A bigger threat, but he also can't see it yet. You cannot. So he is going to turn on orange and fire. Okay. Let me get back up to my attacks. So a 16. Okay, 16 is a 26. hit. 26. All right, it is dead. I figured I didn't re-roll the piercer for that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, you swing yourself around towards orange. You shoot it. It falls back from pole, defeated. Anything else for you? Yeah. Uh, no. And Garen used steady aim there, so no movement. Okay. Pole, it is your turn. Uh, I will say because you your polymorph wore off that you just have a sense of like the creature down there. You see that this marrow is not swimming up. It is, we'll say that it fell like 10 feet. Uh, so it is uh, now 10 feet underneath you. Uh, it's only fallen a little bit here. Uh, the marrow is beginning to swim down. It's running away. That's an appropriate response. <laughs> um, Paul is just going to cast um, Blade Ward and then go get in this guy, this other guy's face. Okay. He'll swim around over here. Okay. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. KB. So I was kind of worried about Paul because he got he got hit. How bad does Paul look? Is he bleeding badly? No, it was almost all temp hit points. Okay, <laughs> cool, cool. I'm glad for that. <clears throat> that was one hey, really good heckin' speech. Yeah. <laughs> so I swing around with the trident. I'm going to poke the green one. <clears throat> before he can hurt my friends. Okay. Wow, that's a nat 20. What the? That's a critical. So all the, the pluses. It has okay. 10 hit points. You kill it. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> So, so what does this look like? I, I think it, the the trident, whooshes through the creature's neck, and there's there's this massive tear. So it's a very visual and gory, and the trident arcs around and, and flies back into my hand. And then I turn in my second attack. I sh I, I want to throw it at this one over here that's running away. 
Okay. It's, pro- it's probably at the extent of my range, so it'd be at disadvantage. But I'm internally yeah. inspired by this, this uh, what appears to be an emerging victory. Okay, yeah. Uh, that's a hit. Uh, actually, that, I need to roll it again because it'd be a disadvantage. Oh, okay. It's only a 26. Okay, uh, it still hits. Um... <laughs> only. So I, I poke it in the butt. Yeah, for on the butt cheek. damage. Okay. Yeah. It leaves a trail of blood as it's continuing to flee. Yeah, yeah. Run away. Okay. Arlen, it's your turn. What do I want to do? What do you want to do? Um, I'll I'll keep it simple this turn. I'm gonna Eldritch Blast this one twice. All right, Armor Class thirteen. The one running away for chat. Yeah. Twelve is a miss. Sixteen's a hit. All right. Eight points of damage. Eight damage. You, your uh, little sealy smash into its backside. It continues running away. Okay. Anything else for you? Um, that's gonna be it. Okay. Uh, the sea hag is going to. <laughs> This is great. Uh, the sea hag is going to pull the kelp aside and reveal its face to you, Finn. You are frightened at the moment. It's going to death glare at you. I need a wisdom saving throw or you drop to zero hit points. Ooh. What's the... What's the DC 11 what? wisdom okay. saving throw. Okay, you save. So you see this monstrous face pull out from the kelp and it is a visage of death, something foul and corrupted and it shakes you to your core. You're able to shake it off, but you feel this tremendous fear in your heart for this creature. This thing is pure evil. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's gonna be its turn. It's your turn, Finn. So, as a reminder, you're frightened. That doesn't mean you have to run away. It just means you can't move closer. So if you That's wanted fine. to try to hit it, you can do that at disadvantage. That is normal. Um, yeah. So, uh, Finn just kind of, like, shakes his head. Almost kind of, like, succumbing to the, the frightened. But doesn't quite kind of shakes his head and goes... Uh, you're just pure evil, aren't you? And just grabs it and uses his great club. Okay. You get to make two attacks here. Oh, man. Too bad that's not oh, a crit. It's not a crit. It. Oh. oh. <laughs> so I missed with that one. Uh, armor class is 14, so nine is a miss. It, nine's a miss, yep. Uh, 16 okay. does hit. You bonk All it right. for 11 bludgeoning damage. I'll take something. Yeah. Uh, so you try to hit, and it just dives back into the kelp, and then you swing at the kelp, and it connects, and you hear this ah! horrifying, piercing, blood-curdling scream, but, like, muffled because of the water. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Uh, the marrow are all dead. Okay. Garen, it is your turn. All right. Well, Garen's still not exactly sure where it is in there but he's gonna start shooting okay this is a disadvantage oh so how would that stack up because he's got disadvantage from water advantage from uh steady aim to counter that would it still give him disadvantage again if you have advantage and disadvantage even multiple they just all cancel each other out Mm mm-hmm Okay. So it so is at disadvantage. Normal. Oh, it it's at disadvantage. Because you start at disadvantage, steady aim gives you advantage to make it normal, and then you have disadvantage 
because it, it's it, hidden. It all cancels. It all cancels it all it, out. It cancels it all oh. out. So it's yep. normal. Normal. Yes, it's normal. Okay. 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 And that's actually that's a strat. That's actually a strat. If that's you get busted. Dis- it, it is. If you have right. advantage disadvantage for different reasons, they just it's just normal. No matter okay. how many times you can't have double. That's good to know. I learned something new. Yeah. yeah. So this yeah. is a normal yeah. attack. All right. And you would get sneak attack damage because Finn's right next to it. Technically not, but oh, because it because it's no wait. longer advantage. Yeah. Oh. No, sad. you get sneak attack from good. the within five five a threatened uh, square. It, yeah. There's two criteria that you can get the sneak attack. Yeah. Um, but eleven that's doesn't an hit. 11. Yeah. You fire uh-huh. into the kelp. Nothing happens. That's six attacks. Garen's missed all campaign. <laughs> I mean, you're fighting underwater. Like, I think True. that's it's fine. I think people would understand. If you hit all of these underwater, that would be very <laughs> impressive. That'd yeah, be still scary. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still bothers Garen. <laughs> yeah. Okay, did you want to move at all? Um, I use oh, steady can. aim, yeah, yeah, so yeah. can't. Okay, Pole, it is your turn. You see that one marrow is fleeing and the others, some of their attention has gone towards this kelp. That's level with the group of you. Yeah, uh, Pole's gonna swim over there and see if he can help Finn. Seem, seems like Phil, Finn's having some scary moments. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I won't be able to see over there, but I'm going to fl- swim that way anyway. Okay. So I'll just swim past all these dead. Yeah. Narrow. You basically, uh, with your with your action, you can, yep, right up against him. Okay. KB, it is your turn. <clears throat> yeah, so seeing that the attention has shifted over there, as a bonus action, I'm going to Misty Step. That'll put me right in, 30 feet, put me right in near the group. Okay. And I'm going to crowd right in, I, and hopefully I can I can see what's going on there, and I'm going to get the, get busy with my trident. Okay. Let's do some pokeage. Poke. Okay, 28 poke. is a hit. 13 is a miss. You cool. do... 13, 13 damage. Okay. You see blood Bad. seeping out from between the kelp. That's, that's me. I'm done. Okay. Arlen, it is your turn. Okay, I'm gonna move here. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'm going to cast Guiding Bolts. Okay. On the hag. Okay. Um, I will say that because it's hiding in the kelp, this will be at disadvantage. Okay. Okay, 18, 18. hits. Roll me okay. some damage. I'll roll you some damage. <laughs> damage, please. 11. Wow, 11 damage. Uh... Yeah, I, I think uh, just for thematic fun purposes, this light just like explodes out towards the hag and it just incinerates all the kelp around her. So she's now exposed. And she is positively glowing. She is. Oh my <laughs> God. Fantastic. And that's my turn. Okay. Uh, you see. All right. Cool. I'm gonna do something here. Uh, as the kelp burns away, she turns her face over towards the group of you. You are all within 30 feet. Garen is fine. Uh, she will do her horrific appearance here. I need a DC 11 wisdom saving throw from Pole, from KB, and from Arlen. Doesn't that happen at the beginning of our turn? Uh, we're this is just just role playing, yeah. It's, okay, because that kelp, works. Yeah, kelp's gone. Um, okay. Uh, pull say you all save. Okay. Uh, in this moment, as you all witness the horrific appearance of this hag, uh, you are all able to shake it off and 
see through it, you know that this is a monster and you're able to tell like this is definitely some kind of magic afoot here. And in this moment, KB, as she locks eyes with you, you find a moment of clarity, a moment of silence amidst the battle. You have drawn the Vizier card. Mm -hmm. What kind of dark secret would you like to glean from this hag in this moment of desperation as it looks at you? It's I dying. Want, I want to know the, the ultimate secret uh, weakness of the Sahagan camp. Ooh, that's fun. Does she know that? She's she's a boss. She's an undersea boss. She knows all that. Roll for this. Okay. Uh, you discover that the Sahagan have sank the fortress. The island that the fortress used to be on has been felled in some manner. So you will find that the fortress is partially submerged. And you realize that this could be a pretty big deal if you don't have a way to deal with the water. And 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 uh, I I discovered the secret to get in there. I did I did want to know the secret. <laughs> That's all she knows. She's never been inside of it, but she has seen it from afar. Very good, very good. Okay, cool. That was, uh, that was her turn. Finn, it's your turn. Um, Finn is going to bonk it on the head. <laughs> okay. 19 is a hit, five bludgeoning damage. Yeah, another attack here. All right, tell me what this looks like, Finn. Um, so after all of the like distractions, and I think the kelp being destroyed kind of sp spooked her a bit. So I think I was able to get in two like really lucky shots as she was already sort of damaged. And I just think the the, the last shot kind of just like knocks her silly, and then I can let you take from whatever there if she just sinks or whatever. But um, we'll just say that at the very least I knocked it out. Okay. Well, do you want to kill the hag or do you want to knock it out? Um... You know what? If it was Finn, probably killed. Okay. The it's, hag he, is he, he looks at it as evil, so yeah. It is very evil. The hag falls back into the stubs of what used to be this small cluster of kelp here. And there's a moment of stillness around you as the battle comes to an end. Uh, the marrow here is still fleeing. Uh, we don't have to worry about initiative here. Is the intent of the party to chase it down to slay it? Or would you like to stay here? I think it can swim faster than us. So... It's swimming very fast. Let it go. Let's continue looking for treasure, I say. It escapes, and I don't know how to, to delete that starfish. That starfish is not cute. Um, <laughs> <laughs> essentially, you find that each of the, uh, the marrow here begin to sink deep, deep, deep down, and they fade from view. You find that there are clusters of kelp all around you if you want to swim horizontally, and there's also the the blue hole that stretches out beneath you. Darren is sticking by Arlen. So. Um, we can search the kelp real quick and then keep swimming down, I guess. Right? Yeah, they might have some treasure for us. Okay. Oh, yeah. If uh, any of the uh, Marrow's harpoon guns are still on on or near them, he's going to grab one of them and the ammo. All, all of them. Two-fisted. They're all falling <laughs> through the water. Yeah. Oh, well. Okay. Um, all right. As the group of you begin to pick through the kelp here, you find... A 
a spell scroll. And... A jug. Oh no, wow, are you kidding me? Okay. Nice. Um, no, 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 okay. So uh, you find the hag had on her what appears to be a paper. Um, it is wrapped up and it's sealed with a wax stamp. Uh, you get the sense that it might be a scroll of some kind. You'll have to rip it open in order to look at the contents. But it seems like the seal is keeping it from getting waterlogged and destroyed by the uh, salt water. And then uh, we'll say that in one of the kelp clusters, you find a weird looking hat. It looks kind of like a jellyfish. It is translucent and it looks kind of like a bubble. And you see that inside of this bubble is a skull of someone who died a long time ago. This is so disrespectful of jellyfish everywhere. <laughs> it's not a jellyfish. Hat? It's a magic okay. item. Okay. It looks like a jellyfish, but it's not an actual jellyfish. Does it have magic to strip the skin on flesh off your skull? I don't know if I want it. <laughs> right. Ireland's going to take it. Okay, you can add a cap of water breathing to your inventory. <laughs> That's what I figured Great. it was. Just what I need. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just what I need. Yeah, we'll eyeball that scroll, and based on the spell, we'll give it to whoever can has that on their list. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Looks like you'll have to open it up top. Gotcha. Yeah. I'll carry that up top. Okay. And probably identify the uh, cap of water breathing that Arlen doesn't need. <laughs> okay. Um, you find the equivalent of... Um, 1,600 copper pieces, which is 16 like, gold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you find oh, it, wow. it's like a small ornate chest that's easy. You bust it open pretty easily, and there's a ton of coins in there, but they're all copper. It rains yeah. pennies. <laughs> it's, it's like not even worth it. <laughs> yeah, so it's heavy. too heavy. <laughs> yeah, it's very heavy. All right. Like, I wish, I wish you guys would have let me pick that lock. The chest was probably worth more. <laughs> that just comes off. Um. All right. So you are all floating here at the forty, fifty foot depth, uh, equivalent here. No, it's that plus whatever. Okay, you're underwater. Do you want to mm -hmm. keep going down, or do you want to just go back up? Well, how much time do we have left on our? Uh... Kelp. I'll say that the whole combat was about 10 minutes. So you have 20 minutes left. Okay. Because combat goes really down. fast. Alright. Yeah. So go down. As the group of you continue to descend, that is where we're going to end our session for tonight. Yo. Yeah. It's got to end sometime. No, it doesn't. No. Oh, okay. Forever. That's the last thing Tully would say. <laughs> yeah, especially <laughs> once he finds out about that jug. <laughs> uh, so uh, the camera kind of opens up at the, the end credit scene, and we see Tully just looking down, scratching his butt again, sniffing. <laughs> he sits down. He opens up his backpack. He has a little sandwich. He eats a sandwich, and all of a sudden, there's a dunk. Something bumps into the rowboat and he looks very frightened. Tully looks over the edge and from the water pops up a little bulbous head with two big eyes as the seal <laughs> goes, Arf! And that's where the session will end. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for being here, everyone. I really appreciate it. I hope that you all had fun with the session. Uh, we're going to go around here and reintroduce everybody. Please tell me about who you are, where we can find you, and tell me what your favorite part of today's episode was. And we'll start with Zombie this time. Oh, hi. Me. I'm first. What? What's yeah, you're here? first. Hello. Hello, I'm Jacob. I'm Zombie. I'm Z. One of the two names that call me. I am the lore keeper and Captain Z of the Good Ship Clip. I probably do too many clips, but that's up to your own discretion. Um, uh, favorite part for tonight. Oh, boy. Um... 
You know what? I'll, I'll say it. I Because I think it's nice. I like when we get all new animal friends. I like the seal. Seal might be my favorite part. <laughs> um, so it was just, it was nice to like have that. And I'm kind of happy that everyone sort of seemed to fail to calm it down except for Arlen. So that was kind of nice. Nice little possible pet there. We don't know for sure, but you know, hooray for that. Um, and then of course anything and everything Tully does is, is, is good too. So can't, can't forget Tully. He's the, the other star of our show. Um, but yeah, you can find me on Twitter at zombiefighter89 if you're so inclined. Um, if you go there, there's a pin tweet made by the lovely Lady May. Uh, you should go follow her as well. Greatness everywhere. Um, I have a pin tweet, and that is a business card that was made by her. I do video editing, audio editing, Twitch clips. If that's something you or you know someone who would like that, I am hireable. So come, come find me there. Um, and then as well, um, I know probably this will be promoted at the end, but uh, I, as well as I think everybody uh, else here, is part of Stella's Discord. If you want to come hang out and chat about tonight's show or any other stuff we do there, all the cool stuff that Stella does on this channel and various others will all be there. So just come and join the adventure. Thank you for the shout out. I really appreciate it. Also, hi Raiders, welcome on in. Thank you so much. Oh, hi Raiders. <laughs> Hello. Sorry, we're buttoning up and ending here in a little bit. We're doing some outros and decompression. Uh, we'll hop on over to John. Tell me about you. Hello there. I'm John. I'm also known as Endicarus on the World Wide Web, and pretty much anything that you can be a member of, I make myself a member of and call myself Endicarus on it. So you'll be able to find me easy. Um, I, uh, <clears throat> where else can you find me? Well, I, uh, I, I recently was, uh, at Virtual Gary Con and I was involved in a, uh, filmed session there that's, I guess, on YouTube, um, for playing something called, uh, Dice Songs. And I was also on there with, uh, some of the guys from Blue Box RPG, as some of you may know. They're very, very funny. It's not safe for work humor, some of it, but it was a good one. So yeah, search that out, Dice Songs, and on YouTube, you'll probably find it. They're they're exceptionally great, and I was sometimes funny too. Um, <laughs> my favorite part of today, um, I <laughs> I actually really liked the storm, and I wanted us to go into it, but. It was uh, it was fun that that we just you know just sidestepped this amazing um, pattern of nature where we could have potentially all been transformed into demigods by this amazing magic, but we were scared <laughs> of it. Boo for us! But it still was pretty fun to have uh, Paul see that, and I'll try and remember to write a song about it someday. Amazing! Oh God, the storm was a really cool thing. Uh, I can't remember who rolled, but that was what the roll was for. What kind of storm it is. I, I oh. rolled the 20. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. It, it was good. It was good. It was very smart that y'all didn't stay in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the, really? Yeah, because I, I believe that's the second most dangerous storm out of the list of storms. But it could oh be something God. good, though, right? Yeah. No? Maybe. Uh, uh, maybe. <laughs> We'll hop on over to Godfather Wraith. Hey, I'm Godfather Wraith. I pretty much have no social media presence whatsoever. Um, maybe someday I'll brush off my social media, but I doubt it. Um, so I would say my favorite part, I've actually got two. One was uh, Garen and KB getting to uh, flex some of our big stats or big skill rolls today that was fun um and also kb really showing some teeth in combat yeah so that was that was fun to see too excuse me mr 23 ac that is wild no kidding what the <laughs> that was before the shield yeah <laughs> what the heck amazing <laughs> thank you so much and then Geek Dice, what's up? Yeah, hey folks, I'm Geek Dice or Sean, and this is where I dwell <clears throat> on the internet. Uh, I dwell Wednesdays here. Um, yeah, 
great great times definitely a lot of fun with the combat today i think to my two favorite moments were were that combat you, you know i um i planned a very specific build for kb being multi-class artificer wizard and now he's branching into fighter and really in the last level or two it's really come together it capitalizes on intelligence of course he's running with max possible character intelligence <laughs> due to good fortune and the and a uh, supportive dm so um yeah exploit break the game <laughs> a little <laughs> bit a little bit so yeah, i'm really excited i totally encourage everyone to break the game like just have fun with it you know make sure that everyone else is having fun too and yep. go wild tell a cool yeah, story so I, i'm definitely enjoying that and, and and really kind of maps to kb's aspiration to, to actually become a hero he can actually he can he can you know carry his weight although it's equivalent to a sack of oats, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was enjoyable. That was very definitely something I was. I uh, got my parking stamped on that. So I'm glad for that. And the other thing today, again, that back to the storm, really with with pole up in the crow's nest, is as storm developed around him. You know, that was kind of in a lot of ways kind of iconic for who is pole. He's weathering this storm of all the all, all these these crazy chaotic people violent people and he's he's a person who's trying to to live in peace and, and bring peace and, and and really represent that you know that's that's really strong symbolism there and to, to think that he's inspired possibly towards song you know that that's that's awesome that really kind of moved me so i i i really appreciate that moment that was great thank you so much and then emma Hi, it's me, Emma, also known as Emma Panada. You can find me on Twitch and Twitter at Emma Panada. I'm also writing a TTRPG called All the Witches. It's on Kickstarter right now. We're getting close to another stretch goal. So uh, please give it a look. It's really, really cool. Um, and if you like it, please consider supporting us. Hey, um, Emma, what is All the Witches? All the Witches is an original tabletop role-playing game. Um, that uses some deck building mechanics as well as dice um, to explore the diversity and complexity of fantasy witches. Um, so the idea behind it was um, fuck turfs, let's make a queer book. Um, so if that sounds appealing to you, uh, check it out. Um, it's written by um, BIPOC and queer creators and it's really cool. And I'm looking forward to getting it out to everybody. Um, but yeah, uh, my favorite part, the storm was so fucking cool. Um, <laughs> I wasn't sure if we were supposed to like crash into it or like what the plan was, but, <laughs> but it was really cool and I really liked it. Um, I. I've never thought of a magic storm before where storms are different kind of like um, kinds of magic and a transmutation storm where everything's just changing suddenly is super, super cool. Excellent. Thank you very much. I'm still Luna. If you've enjoyed the content that you've seen here, please consider giving us a follow, following us on YouTube. That's a free way you can support us and get notifications for when we go live and have uploads. Uh, we will be back here next, next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time for Secrets of Salt Marsh. Next Wednesday, we have our uh, Frost Maiden campaign. So please come check us out at 8 p.m. Eastern time as well. You'll find both Zombie Fighter and Geek Dice in that one. Um, my favorite part, uh, I liked the part where we got to role play a little bit with Imloth and Arlen. I want to try to spend more time to flesh out these moments with the NPCs on your crew to show little glimpses of their life, of like who they were and like what their interests are. And uh, I think I'm going to try to incorporate that some more moving forward, especially as we have these in-between moments of like, we're traveling, we're on the boat for a couple of hours or days and um, trying to build relationships from that and perhaps even potential drama. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for being here, everyone. Really, really appreciate it. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your evening and we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.